And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here, Lucas from Mars, again with a, another video. And this one is going to be a American League recap here. We're going to recap the American League team stats and the awards, as well as kind of, again, previewing this postseason bracket. We have the playoff bracket there for you. And uh, we will start the playoffs here very shortly. I will have, I'm editing the final wild card or the wild card games right now. And I will have those out, you know, should have it done it edited, uh, finished edited by early next week. So kind of expect that to be the time when those videos come out and we start the playoffs because I'm really, I'm really excited to do that. But I'm also, you know, let's look at the stats here. These are good players and uh, we want to see what happened around the league in year one. Zach Wheeler, we'll start with him here and we'll start with this Expos pitching staff. And man, Zach Wheeler, incredible this season. Going to be probably my, maybe my favorite to uh, win the Cy Young Award this year. I mean, 221 innings pitch, 182 hits, 41 walks, only 181 strikeouts, but a 2.4 ERA and a 1.01 whip. So the same whip that he had last year, but I mean, a career low in ERA and a career high in innings pitch. He Won the Cy Young. I believe he won the Cy Young in 2021. But, you know, he pitched a ton of innings last year, and he pitched even more this season. He did actually have a... He did actually have 2.6 more war than he... Or this year, or last year, excuse me, than he did this season. And actually, compared to some of his other seasons, this war isn't quite there, just mainly because of the strikeouts. I'm not sure why his strikeout numbers were so down this season or anything. I don't really know why that is the case because he had 247 last year. That's a, that's a ton. But, yeah, I mean, Zach Wheeler was was absolutely incredible this season and uh, definitely was a super solid ace in this pitching staff. And then you go down to Kyle Gibson, and, I mean, Kyle Gibson was also incredible this season. This is, a, I mean, a career year for Kyle Gibson this season. 2.46 ERA, 1.18 whip, 219 innings for him this season. It's the first time that he's ever done, or ever, you know, had 200 plus innings in a full season before. And yeah, I mean, career low whip, career low ERA, 166 strikeouts, really good numbers for him, and a career high in war at 3.7. You know, he was really up there on the running as well for the Cy Young Award. He had a really bad final start of his season, if you can remember from a couple of episodes ago. And that's going to probably hurt his Cy Young chances for sure because he actually finishes with a slightly worse ERA and whip than, um, than Zach Wheeler did this year. And I think those are the kind of the two guys you look at for potential Cy Young award this season in the American League. And then he gets to Luis Severino, and, you know, Luis Severino was just not that good this season. 175 innings, and he gave up over 200 hits, uh, 57 walks, a 1.5 whip is just not very good. He is going to be a free agent. I don't really know if the Expos are going to bring him back. I don't think they necessarily need to, but we'll see what they do in the offseason. Now, Kelly, surprisingly, had a really good year, a career year for him at age 33, 192 innings, a 3.83 ERA and 1.19 whip. He didn't really strike out anybody. He only had 107 strikeouts, but uh, either way, Michael Pineda was also very good as his team's number five starter here, 186 innings for him this year, and a 3.76 ERA and 1.21 whip. So overall, man, this is an excellent pitching staff. Three of those guys finished with a on a cold streak, though, unfortunately. But, man, there's, there are some great numbers there from your starting pitchers. And then you got some guys maybe in the farm system. Um, the biggest one there will be Cole Stewart. But then you go to the bullpen here, and this bullpen was excellent. And Julian Merriweather was a huge part of that. I mean, he had just an incredible year. 140 innings for him, 145 strikeouts. 46 runs allowed, a 2.78 ERA, 1.14 whip, you know, an all-star this season, and definitely a career high, 2.8 war season for him. You know, he only had 26 innings of experience combined going into this season, so I don't think he really knew what you were going to, knew what to expect 
from Julian Merriweather this season, but he just blew those expectations out of the water. And then you got Oliver, Oliver Drake, who had 66 innings this year, 79 strikeouts for him, a 2.45 ERA. I mean, those are excellent, excellent numbers for Oliver Drake. He is 35 years old, and, you know, he did probably tank a lot in overall this season. Not sure how much he went down, but knowing this game, it was probably a lot. And then you get to Josh Domout, who was unreal. I mean, 34.1 innings, and he gave up seven runs, 37 strikeouts, only eight walks. So, I mean, he gave up 30 base runners all year. He had finished with a 0.87 whip. That is unbelievable. Uh, and then Dallas Keuchel here, you know, I probably should have had him pitching in this team from the get-go this season a lot earlier than I did, but he got 25 innings. Uh, he had a 3.55 ERA. I didn't even realize he was on this team for a long time. And then you got Brad Boxberger, who was maybe the best setup guy in baseball this year. I mean, 35.1 innings, 34 holds, 8 runs allowed, 30 strikeouts, a, a sub-1 whip, and... Uh, a 2.04 ERA. I mean, no, those are just wild numbers. Michael Fulmer, really small sample, only 12.1 innings. But, man, and then Corey Knable here. He was this team's closer, and, you know, 39 walk for nine. He did get tanked a lot, and overall, I think he was an 80 overall, I'm pretty sure, at least going into the season. He had a really good year, though. I mean, 43 saves, 16 runs. Now, the whip is a little high because he had 34 walks, this year, that was a big reason for that. Uh, but, yeah, Corey Canable was still a really decent closer here. I don't know if he's going to be this team's closer next year. We'll have to kind of reevaluate. He doesn't actually get a... He didn't actually finish with a positive war on his record there, it looked like. But, yeah, I mean, he was, he was doing the job. He was doing it well. But, I mean, overall, the bullpen as a whole on this team is absolutely fantastic. And the pitching overall is incredible so they know what they got to focus on in this offseason and that's to get some offense man get some guys that can get on base for you and drive some people in because man this team's pitching is really fantastic so here we go into this lineup and Noki Lopez starting things off I mean just nobody's gonna really have crazy impressive stats here Nicky Lopez did get better this season but you know 29 doubles only five home runs and just didn't do a great job being an uh, being a leadoff hitter for them. 247 average, uh, 312 on base, below 700 OPS, only you know around a 650 OPS actually. Uh, Bryson Stott struggled in his rookie year. You know he's 24 years old. He's a 74 overall. I think he's he'll, he'll be he'll be on this team next year. But 30 doubles, you know 625 OPS. He just didn't get on base at all. Uh, Lodi's going out. Junior was maybe the better, one of the best hitters on this team. He did have a career high with 30 doubles this year, but you know, 20 home runs, 73 ribbies, not bad. 736 OPS, but it, again, Lodi's going out was really kind of carrying a lot of this offense because there was just nobody else behind him doing really well, and those are just pretty average numbers at best. He only had a point one war, so. You know, that, that kind of shows you where this offense is at. And then uh, George Springer, you know, had an injury, so that definitely hurt his season, but he still didn't have a good season when he was really playing this year. Only 26 home runs. I mean, the home run numbers, extra base hits are kind of are, are good for him, but only a 233 average and a 309 on base percentage. Just leaves a lot to be desired for me. He didn't get on base that much, really, this year, and uh, overall... You know, just a 2.8 war, like, that's not terrible, but it's not really George Springer. Like, it's not what we expect to see from a guy like him, and he definitely had a down year this year, I think. And then you get Will Smith, and uh, Will Smith definitely have a, had a down year. You know, 88 overall, he declined in his overall. He had only 20 home runs, 23 doubles, 62 RBIs. I mean, these numbers aren't maybe awful for a catcher, but... You know, we've seen him do a lot better in the past, 3.0 war, which is actually kind of higher than I expected. But, you know, only a 235 average and a 316 on base. It's just not anything close to what he's done at any point in his career, really. I mean, you know, last year, he really showed a lot of promise. Finished with an 860 OPS, and, you know, he had way more. He had more at-bats this year, and uh, just didn't really perform very well. Alex Kirillov... 
first year being like a full-time starter, basically. And, you know, he was okay this season. 17 homers and 61 RBIs, but, you know, the on-base is only at 303, so didn't really do a great job of that. Only had a 0.6 war, so just kind of a very average season at best for him. And then Ryan Zimmerman wasn't really a starter, and he is going to be retiring at the end of this year. He's not going to be coming back on this team. You know, nobody's going to sign him in free agency, and, uh, yeah, he didn't have a good season really either, but... Again, those are his final kind of career numbers. Uh, then Ryan McMahon really struggled as well. I mean, only 300 on base, 229 average for him. And, you know, 677 OPS is just not it. So, yeah, you can kind of tell this offense just didn't do much at all. Matt McClain, 40 at-bats in the majors, they were not amazing. 225 average, he had nine hits total. I mean, pretty small sample size. I did increase his potential and his overall quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, this offense is just not not good. Like, Luis Gariel Jr. was the best hitter on this team this year. And, you know, he had a 7.30 OPS. And just, I mean, he wasn't exceptional or anything. I think this offense has the chance to do really well. I mean, you got guys like George Springer and Will Smith. Like, these are guys that are, are supposed to be really, really good. So, you know, maybe we'll see... Those kind of players take off and do a lot better going into next season. Andy Pajes is also there, and he's going to be starting in this lineup next year for sure. But, yeah, just a lot to be desired there with the offense. Speaking of a lot to be desired with the offense, uh, yeah, this team had a bad offense this season. They did have some injury struggles this year, but, yeah, there's not a lot going here for this team. Tommy Pham, 21 homers, 51 RBIs for him at 233. Average, I mean, it's not horrible for him. It's probably above my expectations, but also, you know, 34 years old, I don't expect this team to re-sign him. He's going to be a free agent, and he'll kind of probably be just a backup platoon kind of player wherever he goes next year. Uh, Yuli Gurriel, 313 on base. I mean, he's 37 years old at this point. is at the end of his career. But, yeah, I mean, that's not a terrible season. Not going to be re-signed, though, so he'll be a free agent at 38 years old. But, yeah, I mean, not terrible for yearly Guriel, not amazing either. And then you get to Bryce Harper, and, yeah, Bryce Harper definitely had a had an excellent season. This is, you know, I mean, he's just a, he's just an absolute beast. That's what he is, and he, had, and he cranked out 40 homers and 32 doubles, had an over 600 slugging percentage this year, a 393 on base. We had 72 walks, 306 average, 997 OPS. Yeah, I mean, Bryce Harper was absolutely incredible this season. And uh, there, there's a reason that he's at the top of his game, and he is the superstar of this roster. And actually looking at his career numbers, that is, you know, his home run total, he only had, he only had one more season where he had more than he did this year. He's, you know, 2015 was his only other season that he had. Over 40 homers, and that season was ridiculous. I mean, he had a 460 on base that season. That's insane. But, yeah, Bryce Harper was just it was just so good this season. And uh, we'll see what his war was. He finished with a 4.8 war. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Really, really good stuff there. Eight errors on the field. But, yeah, I mean, Bryce Harper, not much more to say. He's, he's just Bryce Harper, and he's absolutely Incredible at baseball. So there's a look at his uh, statistics or, you know, his attributes again. And, yeah, he's just amazing against righties. The power, definitely a huge part of his game. And uh, this team has, you know, this contract that he's got is really long. So, I mean, he's going to be with this team for basically the whole time they were doing this franchise, I think. So the key is, are they going to, is this team going to be able to build around him? Because that's going to be their star for a long time coming, and that's the guy that they want to build around. Now, only Adamas here, you know, worked through an injury this season, but, man, he didn't, he just kind of struggled this year, honestly, 26 years old, pretty high expectations, and he kind of fell on that, you know, below 300 on base, below 700 OPS, just not great numbers for him. Kiwa Ruiz, as a rookie, was okay, 637 OPS, so not Amazing stuff there. He didn't get on base a lot. He only walked 29 times this year, so definitely the on base was not there for him. But, you know, I, I'm assuming he got some pretty solid development, and, you know, he's only 23 years old, but he only had a .2 war. So uh, just a 
just not a very good at year uh, for him. But, you know, Willie Castro was also pretty bad this season in 493 at bats, 277 on base. That's pretty awful. Um, Kyle Higashioka was also really bad. And, man, he got way too many at-bats, and that's for sure. 41 RBIs for him, but 77 hits in, like, 400 at-bats. That's, that's just awful. Uh, Christian Arroyo, you know, a younger guy at only 26, but, yeah, he just he didn't do that great either. He only had 228 average and a 271 on base. Just 26 walks. Like, the on base for this team was just awful. Like, nobody on this team besides Bryce Harper got on base this year. And, uh, yeah, the offense besides Bryce Harper here, just not good. I mean, that's all I got to say about it, really. Um, that's really all that needs to be said. And the bench wasn't amazing either. But, you know, they did have a injury, a big injury to Nick Castellanos. I mean, he only ended up playing, like, a month of this season. And, man, he was really good. He had 228 at-bats, so he played, like, two months of the season, I think, then. But, you know, 10 home runs, 38 RBIs, a 289 average, and an 840 OPS. Like, man, Nick Castellanos would have definitely helped this team out a lot this season offensively. And uh, his absence was really missed for them. You know, hopefully he'll come back from this MCL next year and be a, a big contributor to the offense. But, yeah, it was definitely hard for them to not have him this season. And then you go to the pitching rotation here, and, you know, Robbie Ray at the top of this rotation, the ace, was honestly not bad. I mean, this is a good season for him. To over 200 innings, slightly worse than last year for him, but, you know, 179 strikeouts, 3.370 ERA. Again, I don't know why the strikeouts are so down for him this year, it's kind of the same thing with uh, Zach Wheeler, and, and that's maybe the one stat that I don't know if MLB The Show does that great of a job at actually recreating because I kind of noticed that that happens a lot with some of these pitchers that, you know, they've had good strikeout seasons, and then in the show, when they actually simulate, they just don't have a lot of, they just don't, you know, have those same strikeout numbers. Uh, but, yeah, really good season, though, for Robbie Ray. And then Sandy Alcantara, 201 innings for him. And, you know, it was decent. He did give up 30 home runs, though. That's quite a bit. Uh, 1.33 whip for him, a 4.16 ERA. Dakota Hudson, 182 innings, a 3.45 ERA, and a 1.24 whip. Uh, eh, not, not awful. Not awful, I guess, from Dakota Hudson there. You know, arbitration for the next three years for him. Uh, Alice Cobb was actually really good this season. Wow, 201 innings. 63 runs, 2.81 ERA, and a 1.27 whip. And this is a guy that um, I think is a no-brainer to trade going into this offseason. I definitely think that this team, that the Wizards are going to strike a deal to send Alex Cobb to, to somewhere. I mean, he had a career year, almost. You know, career-high uh, war since 2013 was the only season that he had a higher war. So, yeah, definitely a really good season and a definitely a trade candidate going into his final year of his contract. So, you know, that's the starting pitching here on this team. And you go to Joe Rock, and, yeah, we saw Joe Rock kind of struggle this season in the innings that he had. He only had 20 innings, so it's a really small sample, but he gave up 26 or gave up 25 runs. And, uh, I mean, that that is just – that's not it. That's not what we're looking for. So I don't know if he'll start – in the majors next year, I wanted him to, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen because of those really bad numbers. We'll see uh, what happens there. But in a long relief role, Michael King had an excellent year, 147 innings for him, only gave up, you know, 125 hits. Uh, you know, the walks were not terrible, but yeah, really good numbers. Uh, Jordan Velozovic is a guy probably going to be a starter. We don't have to start the year, but definitely going to get some major league time next season, and then you get those guys, Zach Coley, Corey Kluber started and was awful, uh, Jilly Rodriguez was not terrible, but the whip is, you know, 1.5, 3.24 ERA, 1.12 whip, and uh, 50 innings for Cody Stashek, who was, you know, one of this one of these teams' better bullpen guys here, he actually had a really good season, uh, Chad Green, this was a guy who had a ridiculous season, you know, six bone saves, 38 saves, 
42 innings, but allowed 11 runs in those 42 innings. A 2.32 ERA and a 0.89 whip, 36 strikeouts. I'm going to definitely consider trading him as well in this offseason for the Wizards. One of the better closers in baseball here. And, you know, this is a guy that they could definitely use to get something in return. Yeah, overall, this team's bullpen wasn't very good. It just wasn't great. Um, Chad Green was absolutely incredible, though, so we'll see where they go uh, with this bullpen in the future. You know, we go on to the Honey Badgers here and, you know, New York playoff team this season. And they're, a big reason for that is their pitching. Their pitching was excellent. And Carlos Rodon was really, really good. 220 innings, 190 strikeouts. A 2.54 ERA and a 1.07 whip. So, yeah, this is a guy that's definitely going to be in the Cy Young conversation. 15 and 8 record wise for him this year. You know, 70 walks. But, yeah, I mean, Carlos Rondon is one of the better pitchers in baseball at this point. And he had, you know, a 4. Point over 4 war season. You know, last year had a season, had an excellent season cut short by injury. Got a full season this year. And just showed why he is one of the best starters in baseball. And then Zach Granke, you know, at 38 years old, he still held up. And he still had a really good season. 205 innings, a 3.42 ERA, 1.1 whip. He is a free agent. And I don't know, I, I don't see really any reason why New York wouldn't want to bring him back. So we'll see what happens with that in the offseason. But, you know, Chris Paddock was also excellent. 26 years old, and he had a career year. 188 innings, a 3.02 ERA. 1.12 whip, 3.7 war, all career highs for him, all career bests, I should say. Uh, and, and yeah, 139 strikeouts, just really, really excellent numbers from Chris Paddock. Uh, Lewis Gill was not very good, actually, you know, 1.51 whip. So we'll see what happens with him. Uh, but yeah, this is just not a good season for him in his development. Uh, Luisa Hernandez, though, as their number five kind of long reliever, Type of pitcher, 3.87 ERA. He had a really good season. I'll take that. But yeah, definitely a good starting rotation here in New York. And then the bullpen, Devin Smeltzer, 106 innings for him. Definitely his biggest workload that he's ever had. And he handled it really well this season. Justin Steele, 20, 24 innings. Man, give him more innings. He only gave up six runs and had a 0 0.86 whip. He had a really good year, only 26 years old. And he's going to get a lot more innings this year, I expect. And then you go to Scott Alexander, and he only had 20 innings, so pretty small sample, but gave up seven runs. Uh, did give up 11 walks, though, so, you know, kind of had some of those underlying numbers a little bit high. But Sean Doolittle did a lot this season, actually, and he was really good. 37.2 innings, eight runs allowed, a 0 0.96 whip and a 1.91 ERA. You know, 29 strikeouts, so definitely a really good season. He's, you know, 35 years old. He's definitely an older kind of reliever at this point in his career, but, man, he had a good season, that's for sure. Dominic Leone, 23 innings. Yeah, he gave up some runs there. Not great. Uh, Anthony Bender, 19 holds. He was all right. Uh, 3.99 ERA. The whip is pretty high, though, just because he gave up a lot of hits. Austin Adams was pretty good. Okay, 52 innings. He did give up 42 hits and 39 walks, though. So that's a little concerning. The 1.56 whip is definitely concerning to me. Uh, but, you know, had an overall decent season. I mean, yeah, the walks is just he just doesn't do well with that. He just walks a lot of guys. That's his really his worst stat by far. And then you have Kirby Yates, 47 saves, which is a lot. 54.2 uh, Innings pitch, you know, the ERA is, is pretty high, though, 4.12. I don't know why, necessarily. I mean, he had 51 strikeouts. That whip is at a really good spot with a, you know, 1.04 whip and, uh, you know, a 0 0.4 war. So I think Kirby H just kind of got unlucky this season a little bit. But, you know, overall had a pretty decent year. And actually, I'm going to move Austin Adams out of that setup role and put Sean Doolittle there because, yeah, I mean, his numbers this season were just really really incredible. So, good starting rotation, decent bullpen. Now, let's go to the offense. And here leading off is Christian Yelich. And Christian Yelich had a bounce back here in a big, big way. You know, not quite his 2019 
numbers for him, but man, 150 hits, 31 doubles. That's actually, you know, his best since 2018. 26 homers, 57 RBIs, which is pretty low, mainly because he was leading off on this team and just not a lot of guys ahead of him got on base for him. But, you know, 854 OPS, a 3.91, that's his best since 2019. So, yeah, all, all in all, for Christian Yelich, this was definitely the big bounce back year that he kind of needed to get his career back on track. And then Jeff McNeil was all right. I mean, a below 700 OPS, 12 homers, 52 RBIs, 267 average. So, yeah, not amazing numbers, not terrible. Jaron Judge was really good, no surprise there. 151 hits for him. Six triples, which is a ton, actually. That's definitely a career high. 35 home runs and over 100 RBIs for, I believe, maybe only the second time in his career. But still, man, I mean, he had an impressive, impressive season. A 5.5 war year, which is his highest since 2017. A 272 average, 528 slugging. Yeah, I mean, just an excellent season for Aaron Judge, one of the best outfielders in the league. So you have him as a big hitter in this lineup, and then you also have Austin Riley. So Aaron Judge ended up getting the most RBIs on the team, finished with 107. Austin Riley finished with 106. But man, Austin Riley is only 24 years old, and he's already cranking out 38 homers, 26 doubles, and, you know, a, you know, a 500 slugging and an 819 OPS. Like, this, these are... Awesome numbers, 2.4 WAR. So, yeah, in terms of WAR, it's a kind of a, a step back from last year. I mean, an average and on base, it definitely is. So maybe not as good as last year for him. He's only 24. Like he's gonna have just insane seasons for a really long time in his career here at this point, and you really can't deny 38 home runs. And then there's Miguel Cabrera, 38 years old, end of his career, and. Yeah, you know, he started out the season really, really well, kind of finished, cooled off a lot, and now he's only down to a 68 overall. 20 homers, 64 RBIs, and, you know, next year is going to be his final season in the major leagues. Um, I'm going to increase his overall a little bit, probably, but, yeah, Miguel Cabrera's last year is definitely in sight, and next year will be his kind of final season, his career, or maybe not his final season, but... Um, at least his final season with New York, and I will kind of decide if I want to just have him retire next year or not. I think he will because that's kind of what he did in real life. I believe he retired at the end of this season here. But uh, Ramon Lariano was, eh, okay, not great. I mean, it kind of a step back compared to what he's done in the past. 21 homers, 65 RBIs, just not a great average on base this season. Neither had Nora Fall, didn't. Do very well at getting on base. Jalen Miller has a rookie, really struggled this year. Only 109 hits, 274 average or on base, I mean. And he's not going to be starting on this team or in this lineup, I don't think, um, going into next season. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have him stay in the minors for a little bit. And then awesome Kim batted under 200, so just really bad stuff there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is the question. I've talked about it before with this team. Uh, but where are they going to get their offense on this roster here? Jason Dominguez is in the Major League roster for some reason. I can't really change that. But where are they going to get the offense from on this roster here? Besides, you know, Yelich, Judge, and Riley. Not sure. We'll see what they can do in the playoffs. Now we go to this team that won the division here in the Boston Barons. 92 wins this year. And a big part of that is their offense was pretty good. Their offense got on base at a pretty decent rate here. Romero Rosario wasn't very good, though. He did have 43 doubles and 7 triples, which is a lot. But, you know, probably not the best leadoff hitter. Kevin Kiermaier started off the season really hot. And, I mean, overall, this is probably one of his better offensive years that he's had. 27 doubles is a career high for him. But still not amazing offensive numbers. Uh, Luis Arias did have a pretty good season. I'll take that 24 Doubles for him. He's only 24 years old, so he's only going to get a ton better. And uh, he should be, you know, one of those guys that could be a really good offensive player for a while in this franchise. 867 OPS, 3.3 war. Um, an injury did hamper his season, though, so he could have had even better numbers had he been uh, healthy the whole year. Same thing with Kyle Tucker, you know, only 25 years old and a 261 
average for him, 828 OPS, uh, 25 homers and 72 ribbies. I mean, he had a really good season that was kind of cut short a little bit by injuries, but 20 stolen bases as well. I wonder how many Ahmed Rosario had. I actually forgot to check that stat. You can go back and look at it. But uh, 3.6 war for Kyle Tucker and, you know, 437 at-bats. Really good stuff. And then uh, Darren Ruff was really good, actually. 25 homers, 75 RBIs, 257 average, and a 363 on base. 816 OPS. I mean, these are really good stuff from him. One of his best seasons, really, of his career. I mean, he's, you know, played for, for, over, for just over five years in the majors now. 3.6 war. Yeah, I mean, a career season for Darren Ruff at 35 years old. And the power was, you know, kind of on display more than it really ever has been for him. Now, so next year, his final year of his contract. And I expect his last year with Boston. And then you get to Alejandro Kirk. And Alejandro Kirk was absolutely incredible. I mean, one of the best young catchers in baseball here. He up, he increased his potential. He's at an A potential now. And he had 26 doubles. 14 homers, 62 ribbies, 57 walks to only 65 strikeouts. The average at 299, on base at 384, OPS 857. That is just incredible stuff. And a 4.6 war. That is awesome. So, yeah, Alejandro Kirk, one of the best young catchers in all of baseball here at only 23 years old. And uh, this season was his truly his breakout year. Really excited to see what he will do in the future of this franchise, for sure. And then Kevin Biggio was really good, too. 365 on base, 867 OPS, 24 homers and 71 ribbies. I mean, that's a career year for Kevin Biggio, for sure. Over 500 slugging, actually, too. So he had he showed a lot of power this year. So actually, he had a lower war than he did. Did I, did I see that right? He had a lower war than he did in his rookie year. But you know, either way, really good numbers. Uh, Andrew McCutcheon... You know, averaging on base, not amazing, but, you know, he did have 736 OPS. He did have 17 homers and 76 RBIs, and he did have 39 doubles. That is a career high for him, I would expect, and uh, that is a lot of doubles, man. That's really kind of crazy, actually. Uh, he is on his final year of his contract, and, you know, honestly, if I'm Boston, I would kind of want to keep him back. We'll see if they end up doing that. Um, or if he goes and, be, and, and becomes a free agent. I don't think you necessarily need to have him in your offense again, but I don't think it would be a bad thing to to have him on the team again next year. But, you know, there's the bench here. I mean, overall, the offense was really good this season, I think, and, you know, I we'll see what they can do in the playoffs. But, yeah, overall, this is a pretty good offense, and a lot of guys that had just career years. So, you know, you go to the injured list, and uh, they are missing a pretty big piece to their offense, which is Trevor Story, who tore his rotator cuff kind of in this third month of the season, I think. And, you know, he wasn't having a really amazing year. Necessarily, he was only batting 238 and had a low, low 300 on base. But, you know, it's a guy that you're de definitely going to miss, probably in the playoffs. I mean, this is a guy that has playoff experience and uh, is a 92 overall, so you really can't discount uh, his ratings at all, and, you know, he's, he's going to be signed for a long time, so he'll be coming back on this team, but that was a big injury for them this season. Then you go to the pitching, and you know, the pitching is all right for this team. Not anything, not anybody, like, really super stands out to you, I don't think, but, you know, a lot of pretty, really good, um, above-average guys. Nathan Novoli is one of those, 280 innings for him, 180 strikeouts, and a 1.1 whip is pretty good. Uh, Trevor Rogers was, you know, he was all right. He's only 24, so he's got a lot of time to develop. And uh, this season was okay, a kind of a step in a decent direction for him. And then this team traded for Joe Musgrove at the deadline. And I think that his stats went up when they got him because he was at like a 3, you know, he's at like a 3.3 ERA. And he finished with a 3.9 ERA. You know, he's got a, he finished with a more or a 3 war. So, yeah, Joe Musgrove was pretty good. I think he might have wanted to have him pitch better since he got here, but still a good season. Um, and then Zach Plesak, 3.46 ERA for him, 1.23 whip. Those are good numbers. And then Jordan Montgomery at the bottom of this order really struggled. But, I mean, you know what? Again, overall, it's not, an, it's not a pitching staff that has a 90-plus overall, like, 
superstar ace on it, but a lot of guys that had pretty decent seasons and did did pretty good this year overall. Then you get to John King and uh, the bullpen here. John King, 3.2 ERA. I did have quite a... I mean, the walks were maybe an issue for him. Didn't strike out a lot of guys, but um, John Bender was pretty awful, actually, in 18 innings. Brooks Raley was really good, though, in 45 innings. 12 runs is all that he gave up. Only 15 walks allowed and a 1.06 whip with a 2.38 ERA. That is some exceptional numbers there from books really you know really good career year for him and Miguel Figueroa a rookie this year for the Bears and he actually had a really good rookie season 56.2 innings 50 strikeouts 2.86 ERA the whip is pretty high because they give up 53 hits um, so his hit per nine is not maybe the best but definitely better than I would have expected him to do Tanner Scott was just an absolute beast this season and his 30 innings, I mean, five runs allowed. He actually only, you know, 15 walks, but he didn't give up a lot of hits at all. Only 16 hits allowed, 46 strikeouts. That's a ton. 1.480. All right. I mean, those are numbers that you just cannot deny. Those are some incredible statistics there for Tanner Scott this season. Yeah, I honestly don't know if he got the development that he really deserved to, but you get your second rider who was this team's. Kind of setup guy, yeah, 38 holds, and he had a pretty decent season overall. But, yeah, David Bednar, I mean, this guy's unreal. <laughs> he had a incredible season last year in real life, and this year was just fantastic. 58 saves, that leads the majors, all the baseball. You know, only five blown, 67 innings, 63 strikeouts, a 2 war, and a 0 0.92 whip, a 1.6 war. I mean, 15 runs, only allowed three homers all year, 18 walks. This is just some unreal stuff here. David Benar is going to win reliever of the year uh, pretty easily. I don't think there's really anybody else in the National League uh, or the American League that really contends with him besides, you know, maybe Chad Green. But 67 innings is a ton for a closer. I mean, that is a lot of innings. So David Benar wasn't really just a one-inning guy. He could pitch two or three innings for you in a game. But, yeah, I mean, reliever of the year, the best closer out there in the game. 3.64 ERA for Drew Steckenrider. And overall, a pretty decent bullpen here for the Boston Barons. And actually, Debbie Garcia got called down by the CPU. And, I mean, there is kind of a reason for it, I guess. He did give up over 100 runs and 163 innings. Yikes. Uh, had 106 strikeouts, yeah, 5.57 ERA is just not good at all. So I honestly think he probably will stay here in AAA at the beginning of this upcoming season just to get him some more experience. Sean Reed Foley was also a closer uh, in the bullpen for this team, and he was really bad as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go in and kind of adjust some of these ratings, or actually I'm adding Debbie Garcia to the playoff roster. And uh, calling down Joe Mantiply, who didn't pitch at all this season. So um, that is what I just did right there. But yeah, we'll see what this team can do here. They're facing off against the Houston Reapers in the first round of the playoffs. And then we go to the Phoenix, the Firebirds here. Not the Phoenix, they're Toronto Firebirds. But either way, we go to the Firebirds, and uh, here's Shohei Otani. You know, his offensive numbers, that's what they look like here. I'm not sure how much. Again, I don't know why I can't see their assist. I hope that is fixed next year. I really hope that is a thing that I can see their development and decline next year. We'll see if that is a thing that is fixed. But uh, either way, here's Shohei Otani's pitching numbers. And uh, yeah, he had an incredible year on the mound. 212 innings pitched, 162 hits, only allowed 231 strikeouts. Believe that that's probably tops in the American League. I'm not sure if there's anybody else with more. 1.09 whip, 5.4 war pitching. So, yeah, he had his best year pitching-wise of his whole career here. And, I mean, just absolutely popped off from the mound. 17-9 record, 70 walks. You know, that was that's not that much, really. I mean, th those are just incredible numbers. Show Otan is a true unicorn, and I'm really sad that he's not going to get to pitch uh, going into next year because of his injury that he has in real life. Uh, but we'll look at his offensive numbers uh, here in a bit as well. Hyen Ryu, 203 innings, 
for him, a 3.84 ERA, so pretty decent season there. Uh, Luis Castillo had, you know, an all right season, a 3.93 ERA and a 1.38 whip. And then Brady Singer, you know, is still a young pitcher, and uh, he kind of struggled this year, that's for sure. Um, and then Patrick Sandoval, 3.81 ERA and a 145 whip, so not awful. I mean, really, besides Shohei, this team's pitching staff isn't that great and not exceptional. Um, Darren McCoggin was awful with an over six ERA. Casey Sadler, 55.2 winning, 16 runs. I mean, you take those. Those are really good numbers, man. 2.59 ERA in total and a 1.13 whip. Great stuff here from Casey Sadler at 31 years old. Um, he only gave up four, three runs in 40 innings last year. That's that's unreal, actually. And then he followed it up with a season that was just, I mean, just absolutely incredible as well. And then uh, James Hoyt was really good. 46 innings for him, 15 runs, sub three ERA and a 1.23 whip. Yeah, I mean, did give up a, a good amount of hits there, but overall had a good season. Chris Davinsky pitched a lot of innings, 79.1 innings, 27 runs, 83 strikeouts at 306 ERA. He had a really good season as well. Lucas Sims, 30 holes, 46 innings, 15 runs. I mean, those are good numbers, man. A 1.08 whip and a 2.91 ERA. So definitely a good season. Definitely better than last year for him. One of his better seasons of his career here as his team's setup man. Matt Barnes was this team's closer, and he did a really good job here in this role. He only blew three saves. All season, he had 42 in total this year, 12 runs and 40 innings, 15 walks, 2.7 ERA, and a 1.1 whip. Yeah, those, those are good numbers. Matt Barnes, you are kind of you earning that spot to be this team's closer again next year, I think. But, man, overall, this bullpen was fantastic. Uh, really, really good bullpen here. And, um, you know, this team just missed out on a playoff spot here in this season here, finishing with an 82 record. And, I mean, that bullpen is really good. I don't want to change it very much at all going into next year. So what are this team, What does this team need? This team probably needs better, you know, pitching around Shohei. I mean, maybe maybe some offense. We'll see. Let's look at this team's offense here. And here's starting off with Miles Straw, who did a great job as his team's leadoff hitter. Goal is to get on base, and that's what he did. He had a 306 average, but... He also had some really other incredible numbers. He had nine triples, 50 doubles, and 37 stolen bases. That is a, one of the best here in this in the American League. 6.5 WAR. That is incredible um, this year as well. So that's you know easily career best for him. And Miles Straw really came out of nowhere and had a really really great season. Seven homers, 53 RBIs, so good stuff there. Uh, Nico Horner, hey, he wasn't amazing, I guess, but wasn't awful either. He's just really good at defense, and, you know, he's only 24 years old, so uh, the offense should get better with time. You know, below 700 OPS, though, did struggle. Um, Jesse Winker did not. He was fantastic and actually was slightly better in, you know, his on base and average numbers as he was last year. He didn't slug as much, uh, but he did have 31 doubles, 23 homers, 72 RBIs still, and, you know, 4.5 war. So, yeah, his last two seasons have been absolutely excellent, and uh, this year was fantastic for Jesse Winker, one of the best on base, just offensive players in the league now all of a sudden. And, you know, definitely does that damage against righties there. If you look at his stats, I mean, I don't know what he did against lefties. Actually, that would be kind of interesting. I don't think I looked at it here in this <clears throat> in this episode. But, you know, now we get to show Otani. And uh, let's look at his offense. 444 at-bats, 25 doubles, 27 homers, 84 RBIs, 288 average, and a 368 OPS. Yeah, I mean, this is great stuff. 900 OPS. You know, definitely maybe not not as good as last year when he had, you know, 46 homers. That's ridiculous. But he also had, we lost at bats. He almost, almost, excuse me, he almost had 100 less at bats than he did last year. So I don't really know why that's the case. I don't know why he got um, so less at bats than he did a season ago. But, you know, 3.4 war. That's incredible. He combined this year for like a, a nine. So he had 5.4 war pitching. He combined this year 
for an 8.8 .8 war in total between his pitching and his hitting. I mean, just fantastic. There's nobody like him in baseball. And then look at Pete Alonso, and kind of like he did in real life, he really struggled with his average, and I don't really know why. Like, his vision and discipline are pretty good, and pretty good spots, and his contact numbers are pretty good. But he only have added 224 and had a 303 on base. So those numbers are definitely down for him. He did have 32 homers, but only had a 1.5 war. So overall, yeah, you would consider this a down year for Pete Alonso, even though his down years are still pretty good. And then Michael Goodfordo was actually really good. I'll take these numbers for sure. 781 OPS for him, a 3.5, a, a .352 on base, and a 4.29 slugging. I mean, that's good stuff from him. Christian Vasquez, he was not great. I mean, he's his team's catcher, so you don't really expect him to be that good offensively, but struggled in that department. But Heimer Candelario, this guy surprised me with how good he was this season, and he really did improve a lot from, you know, some of these numbers that he had last year. 2.9 WAR, so actually it was a little bit lower in that, but improved his average to 282, 87 RBIs, which is actually, I don't actually don't know that might be the highest on the team, and it is. So you know he led the team in RBIs this season, which is kind of crazy. 19 home runs. I mean, yeah, that is really good stuff from Candelario. And then the bench here, Will Myers was not actually that bad on the off the bench for this team. Pretty good. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of it for the bench here. And now you notice that Shohei Otani is in this lineup twice for some reason as the pitcher and the um, and the and an outfielder. Uh, I don't know how exactly I'm going to fix that, but I definitely am going to try to fix that going into next year. Yeah, I don't know why he's in there twice. So you, I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it was working. It was it was doing what it should be doing for the entire season, and then kind of at the end of the year, it got a little messed up, and um, I'm not sure. We'll, I'll, I'll figure out how to fix that. But then we go to Vancouver, and the Vancouver Vandals here, who just sneaked into a playoff spot this year. Uh, actually, no, they didn't. They played a game 163, and they lost it. So, you know, just missed a playoff spot here. And here's Charlie Blackman. Charlie Blackman had 39 doubles this season. That's really good and impressive. 18 homers, 66 RBIs, 270 average. I mean, you know, 35 years old. This is a good season for Charlie Blackman. Chuck Nasty had a good year. I'll take that. I'll take these numbers from him. He did only have a point one war, though. Uh, and then we go to J.P. Crawford, and J.P. Crawford also had a really good year. 759 OPS, 280 average. You know, 22 stolen bases, that's pretty good, but 41 doubles, that is a ton. One of the best, you know, double-hitting machines in baseball this year, 80 RBIs in total. You know, this is his first year truly being a starter, and uh, he made the most of it, and he had a really good first season as a starter here for Vancouver. Hopefully, he can continue to improve going into um, next year and beyond. 2.4 war. Career high, I'll take that. And then Catel Marte, I mean, the average in the on-base, OPS, yeah, I mean, a lot of these numbers are definitely kind of down from what we've seen him do in his career. He did have, you know, 93 RBIs. He had 20 home runs. He led the team in RBIs this season. So, you know, not a, not everything was bad about Catel Marte's year, but I think you could definitely tell that he could have done better this season, especially at getting on-base. Um, you know, he's 20 years old, he's a 91 overall, he should get continue to get better, but an interesting season for him. And actually, he's tied in RBIs with Nolan Arenado, who had a really good season, uh, but maybe kind of a down year, although actually it was better in a lot of respects than his season last year. He did only have 17 doubles, though, which is kind of low for his standards, I think, but, you know, 3.7 war, that's higher than last year for him. I don't know. Is this this isn't really like prime Nolan Arenado though, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if his defense is really as good in, in this game as it is in real life. But you know, he finished with 301 home runs this year. That was a really cool moment to call the his 300th homer. But yeah, Nolan Arenado was still really good though. And then Anthony Rizzo, 150 hits for him, 27 doubles, 19 homers, you know, 275 average. Yeah, those are pretty decent numbers for Anthony Rizzo this year. Not anything uh, crazy, but not anything really awful either. So, 
kind of, you'll you'll take those numbers for him this season. And uh, you know, very similar actually to kind of what he's done in his career previously. Dylan Moore was just plain bad, 226 average for him. Uh, yeah, he just struggled. He is a really good utility guy, but just didn't play that role well at all. And uh, neither did Brad Miller. Uh, but Gabriel Moreno here as this team's rookie catcher was really good, actually. Had a good season, um, you know, improved quite a bit. I don't know in what, uh, but either way, he had a really good season. I mean, I'll take these numbers from a first-year catcher, 719 OPS, 264 average, 13 homers, and uh, 60 RBIs this year. 2.2 war? Yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, I'll take that every day for Gabriel Moreno. So we'll see where he can go and how he can improve going into next year. We'll look for that for sure. Uh, and then Benny Montgomery is, you know, up here, and he's one of those guys in this outfield that I think I'm going to give a shot to next year. Kyle Isbell was on this team for a while, and he actually had a really good time at the majors. He had 102 at-bats, and he had 28 hits, 754 OPS, two, well, two homers, and 12 RBIs. I mean, those are those are pretty decent numbers, man. I'll, I'll take that from Kyle Isbell, and uh, for me, he's earned a chance to be a starter going into next year on this team. So uh, we'll see what he can do with that role. But yeah, I mean, here's the look at Benny Montgomery's stats, and you know, he's only going to be 20 years old next year, so I don't, there's no need to rush him to the majors. I think he'll start the year in the farm system in AAA, but he's a guy that could play into uh, the future here for Vancouver very, very soon. I go to the pitching, and this team's pitching was probably most of its downfall. I mean, Steven Strasburg was pretty good here. 170 strikeouts for him, a 1.28 uh, whip and a 3.76 ERA. So, yeah, Steven Strasburg was not bad. I mean, these aren't like true ace numbers, I don't really think. So, you know, this team is definitely going to want to improve that in the offseason. Ian Anderson was pretty good. He's only 23 years old. So, definitely a lot to build on here for him this season. And those are his attributes. And, you know, got to improve maybe on the whip a little bit, but still. Pretty good numbers for Ian Anderson. Uh, better and and a higher sample size uh, than last year for him. And then Tuki Toussaint and 68 innings pitch, 12 games started. I'll, those are good numbers, man. 28 runs allowed and, you know, a pretty decent whip there at 1.3. I will take those numbers and definitely earned a chance to be a full-time starter in this rotation next season. Anthony Escalfani was... Pretty decent here, 3.84 ERA, 1.25 whip, and almost 200 innings. Yeah, I mean, those are not terrible numbers for him either. And then uh, Luke Weaver actually was really good as his team's number 5. A 1.82, 182 innings, a 3.1 ERA, and a 1.26 whip. So, you know, overall, 3 war. You know, overall, this is a, actually not an awful starting pitching staff. I do think that they are going to want to maybe go after an ace a true ace in the offseason for this pitching staff. But, you know, overall, as it stands, this pitching staff is really not too terrible. Then you go to the bullpen here, and this team's bullpen was, it was all right. Luke Taiwan Walker was okay as this team's on a lever. Darwinson Hernandez had a really high whip at, you know, 1.65 this season. He had 31 walks. Uh, Luke Jackson was incredible, though. 44 innings, 9 runs allowed, 1.84 ERA. And a 1.11 whip, I mean, those are absolutely crazy numbers. Uh, a guy that I never really talked about in this season as a guy that was having a really incredible year, very under the radar, prime season for Luke Jackson this year. And uh, actually, you know, last year for him was incredible as well. 63 innings and, you know, sub-2 ERA, and he did it again this season. And then there's Sam Conrude, who pitched 98 innings. This year, he had a 3.38 ERA and 1.22 whip, so really good sample for him and uh, ended up having a really solid season for sure with 80 strikeouts as well. Did decline in overall, though. He's you know down to a 79, 73 overall, but really good season. And then you go to Richard Blair, this team's setup man, and you know, the ERA is over four. Did have 36 holds, which is a lot. Um, but, you know, maybe give a little bit too, more, too many more runs than you would like. Michael Felias had over five ERA. It wasn't that great. Uh, Nick Anderson, you know, we did blow eight saves, 40 total. But, you know, 52 innings for him, only 18 runs allowed. 
Three hundred eight ERA. Not terrible numbers for Nick Anderson this year as his team's closer. And uh, overall, as a whole bullpen, you know, definitely ups and downs to this team's bullpen, but pretty decent overall. And then we go over to the Toronto Raptors. We're going to have to deal with a really major injury here in this playoff run, and we'll get to that in a bit. But Marcus Stroman is going to actually be their ace now in the playoffs, and he's going to take the ball in game one for them up against whoever wins the wild card game. And, you know, he was pretty decent there in 197 innings. But I don't really know if he's really ace material. Cal Control, he's never done it before. And then there's Cal Control, who, you know, had over 200 innings this year and finished with a 3.12 ERA and a 1.14 whip. So, I mean, both of those pitchers had really good seasons. Cal Control actually had, you know, almost a kind of career year for him, just slightly below his previous war. But, you know, way more innings for him this season. And, you know, just a slightly higher ERA, but a lower whip. So, good season. Real career year for Cal Control, only 27 years old. And uh, then Griffin Canning was, eh, he was okay in 184 innings, 4-2-1 ERA, and a 1.38 whip. And then Caleb Killian here in, a rookie, in his rookie year, struggled a little bit for sure, 4.65 ERA, not great. Brett Honeywell Jr. is actually going to be this team's number five starter here in the playoffs, and, you know, seven starts at 3.1 ERA, 40 strikeouts. I actually think he earned a, you know, maybe a long relief role in this bullpen because those are some pretty good numbers for him, and there's not really anybody else in this bullpen that is, or in the farm season pitching-wise, that is really that impressive for this ball club. Dan Winkler really struggled in this year. But you go to the actual bullpen here, and there's A.J. Mentor, 40 innings for him this season, a 1.4 whip. Pretty high, gave up 44 hits this year. That is definitely a little bit too much, I think, but uh, not terrible overall. John Curtis, 107 innings, was their main and long relief person, and, you know, 286 ERA and a 1.08 whip. I mean, take those numbers, man, almost a one war this season. Those are good numbers from John Curtis. And then our oldest Chapman started the season as their closer. Um, I kind of moved him out of that role because he was – Walking a lot of guys, and I just kind of maybe struggled a little bit in that role. I mean, he finished with a 142 whip. I honestly think the years of Oldest Chapman being a full time closer are part of, probably behind him at this point in the franchise. He only blew three saves and, you know, had an overall decent season, but, you know, probably not going to be this team's closer going into next year. Carl Edwards Jr. had a 5 ERA and a 1.6 whip. Not good. Reyes Maranta was not good either. Uh, Alex Colome was, hey, eh, okay, not amazing. And uh, Hector Norris was really good, though. Hector Norris was probably this team's best overall relief pitcher. 67.2 innings for him, 24 holds, 20 runs, 20 run, runs given up, 84 strikeouts, a 2.66 ERA, and a 1.12 whip. I mean, that's fantastic numbers from Hector Norris, who, you know, in real life, one of the best open guys out there and had a really good season this year for sure and actually finished with a 2.1 war that's really good for a relief pitcher actually and uh, you know kind of a career year for him in a lot of aspects I mean he has had some really good seasons but this one was pretty incredible then Tim Meza yeah this is a breakout year a career year for him 56.1 innings he sent he ended the year as his team's closer and he really did that job well 22 saves only three blown a 2.4 ERA, finished with a 1 more, basically, and a 1.1 whip. So, really good numbers for him. And then, I mean, Tim Meza and Hector Norris, those two guys are really good. John Curtis, really good. But the rest of this bullpen is really shaky. And, you know, of course, they had their, their ace pitcher injured at the la in the last month of the season. So, that's going to be a huge issue for them. And I really am concerned about this team's pitching going into the playoffs. And yeah, I just increased Hector Maurice and Tim Mays' potential. But yeah, here's Logan Webb. And man, Logan Webb was having an A season. He was having a really good year. Only 25 years old, 160 innings pitched and 26 starts. And a 3.02 ERA and a 1.15 whip. Yeah, I mean, those are truly ace kind of numbers. And to not have that guy that you can really rely on. I mean, the pitching staff as a whole for this team is still, it's not awful or anything, but man, I, I mean, this team is going to miss Logan Webb, I think, in the playoffs. 
and uh, definitely a big blow to have you know your your ace pitcher be knocked out for some of the most you know the most important games of the season. So we'll have to see. Marcus Stroman will be their ace in the playoffs, and we'll have to see how it goes for them against you know whoever wins that Walker game, either the Diablos or the Honey Badgers. So you go to the lineups here, and this team's offense was definitely the star of the show, and definitely. Excellent. I mean, it's the best offense in the American League here. And we get started with Brian De La Cruz, who increased his potential, but actually went down on overall for some reason. So, you know, I might want to kind of go in there and fix that. I mean, 754 OPS. It was a pretty decent year overall for him. Not like incredible, I guess, but still really good. Andrew Benintendi definitely slowed down as the season wore on because he was up there, you know, had a really good start. And still finished with good numbers, the 745 OBS and a 269 average there. But, you know, as a two-hitter, that's pretty good. And then we get to Juan Soto, who uh, had an absolutely ridiculous season. Now, uh, one thing I'm going to do with Juan Soto is I'm actually going to... I'm going to not take him on overall, but I am going to decrease his stats a little bit. Uh, because his stats right now in this game are not actually really what they are in... Emily with the show, you know, the newest Emily with the show games and uh, kind of the updated roster. So I'm going to change Juan Soto. Juan Soto is not going to be, I mean, he's still going to be really good going into next year, but he's not going to be as overpowered as he is right now. I mean, a 10 war, like this season is the best that you can, you can do. I mean, there's just nothing better than this season here. And I mean, talking about Juan Soto, a pretty clear MVP, at least an MVP candidate. And I think, He's going to win that MVP award. 339 average of 425 OPS and an over 1 OPS. I mean, actually, one, over, almost a 1.1 OPS of 425 on base percentage. And 51 homers, 32 doubles, a 673 slugging. I mean, last year for him was ridiculous with a, you know, over with an 1,000 OPS. I mean, he's got a career 1.012 OPS. Yeah, I mean, just absolutely incredible. Juan Soto, I mean, what can I say about him that hasn't been already said? He's just an absolute phenom, one of the best young superstars in the game. But I will kind of adjust his ratings going into next season. Then you get Jared Walsh, and Jared Walsh popped off, had, you know, career year and a lot of respects for him. He was really good last year, and he followed it up with a very similar season this year offensively. It was really good there. Sander Bogarts, I mean, this guy can just flat out hit. He's incredible. 867 OPS, 291 average, 22 homers, and over 100 RBIs. Finished with 37 doubles and 5 triples. So, yeah, I mean, Xander Bogarts, this guy can just hit. He is an incredible hitter. And, you know, for war, the defense, yeah, it's not amazing. He had 14, he had 14 errors on the field, which is probably a little bit too much, but... I mean, still, the offense from him is just ridiculous. And then there's Joe Yashella, who really, really kind of had a bad ha second half of the season. He was up there. He was batting 300 for the first couple of months and was one of the better hitters on this lineup. He only finishes with a 236 average and a 299 on base. So, yeah, those numbers are definitely not where we want to see them. But then Travis Giarnod was ridiculous, one of the best Offensive catchers in baseball here, 128 hits for him, 28 doubles, 17 overs and 62 RBIs, and 839 OPS. Career year, kind of out of nowhere, it seems, for Travis Dionon, and a career high of 3.6 war. So, yeah, he was fantastic, and uh, just flat out one of the best offensive catchers in baseball here this year. And, I mean, really, he didn't have a season really close to this before in his career so really fantastic to see him pop off and then there's Cesar Hernandez yeah yikes not very good there and uh, then go down to Nick Solak here and uh, Nick Solak yeah Nick Solak was really good as well 286 average 30 doubles that's a career high 13 homers I mean career highs and everything for him basically here 845 OPS 3d1 on base percentage and a 2.0 war really good Career numbers from Nick Solak and, you know, still a pretty young guy. And I don't know what the contract looks like for him, but, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good season there. So we're definitely going to move him over Cesar Hernandez here. But, I mean, you can tell where this offense is. This is just an incredible lineup. It's 
the sc one of the scariest out there, and they're going to need to use this offense here to carry them in this postseason run. Lane Thomas had a you know not a terrible season there off of the bench. He just doesn't he just doesn't have any contact against lefties or I mean against righties. So definitely a lefty heavy kind of player, but really good stuff from this Raptors offense. So then we go to the Portland Chinooks here, and there's Val Contrero, their leadoff hitter. And, you know, the average is pretty low, 242 on base at 313, not amazing. The OPS is not really there, but, I mean, 18 stolen bases. He had 41 doubles, though, this season. So, I mean, he was pretty decent there and just got balls into the gap for sure this season. So, overall, not terrible for his rookie year. He'll go better. Boba Shea, 24 years old, and, you know, still just cranking extra base hits. 40 doubles, 28 homers, 793 OPS, so maybe lower than you would expect, uh, mainly because the on-base is only at 314, but a career high in war at 4 war. I mean, he definitely improved defensively a ton this season, actually. He had a lot of errors last year, so the defense got a lot better for him, and the offense, you know, maybe it got slightly worse a little bit, but... He's still a superstar and still very, very young in this game. So he's got a lot of good years ahead of him. Yeah, I definitely love the team with 92 ribbies. And then you go to Kyle Lewis. And you know what? Kyle Lewis wasn't awful at all. 816 OPS, 28 homers, 75 ribbies, and, you know, four triples here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's good stuff. We would take that from Kyle Lewis, who's only 26. And so, you know, he's definitely a young guy that this team is going to want to build around going forward in the future, 3.9 war this season. So, yeah, definitely a guy you want to build around here if you are the Chinooks, and uh, definitely wants to build off of a really strong 2022. And then there's Ty France, and Ty France was okay. Uh, 21 doubles, 18 homers, 262 average. I mean, just not as good as last year, I'll have to say that. It's just a step back from last season for him, which is you know, disappointing. 27 years old. And a guy with a lot of promise, but definitely kind of a step back. So we'll see what he can do you know, next year. But Matt Chapman, you know, he has been, I mean, he's not really ever been an average guy. And this season wasn't that for him either. 229 average and 308 on base. You know, his strength is definitely his defense, but he's got some power. 20 doubles, 25 homers, 4 triples. So I don't know what they want to want. I don't know what this team wants to do with Matt Chapman. But I could definitely see him being a trade piece or a trade candidate for them in the offseason or going into next year. But yeah, one point at war. That's that's kind of disappointing for Matt Chapman this year at third base. And Austinus Esquino actually improved his potential. I'm not sure why, because he didn't have like an amazing season or anything here. But uh, you know, 17 homers and 50 RBIs, 21 doubles here. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's improving his, you know, overall and his uh, potential, but maybe not an amazing season. Tyler Naquin, 763 OPS. I mean, just very average. Uh, Carson Kelly was also pretty average here at the catcher position. So, yeah, the offense, you know, there's a lot to be desired about it, and it's not really a super strong batting order here. You got Bo Bichette and uh, Kyle Lewis, those are two guys that are doing really good things for you, but not a deep offense really at all, and the bench was not very good either. So that's going to be a focus for them going into the offseason. Then going into the pitching, you know, this pitching rotation wasn't that necessarily amazing. Chris Sale here as the ace was kind of disappointing. He gave up a lot of hits, 197 of them, and uh, the ERA not an amazing spot over four. Tyler Molly was pretty decent, 3.49 ERA here. And uh, 1.29 whip, so not bad, not awful. Uh, John Gray, he, uh, he was a lot worse at 4.8 ERA, not amazing. Uh, Taylor Scooball, you know, a young pitcher, I, I want to see him improve a little bit more. That Those numbers are just not much better than he did last season. And then you go to the bullpen, and, you know, Jake Barnes was not that great. Um, Yuri Perez is only 18, he's not going to be in the major leagues for another couple of years. Uh, Daniel Norris, 27 innings, and, you know, he was good at 2.93 ERA. That guy didn't pitch. Justin Topa, 94 innings. Okay, really good at numbers, actually, from him. A 3.23 ERA and 1.17 whip. So, 
definitely looking at those numbers, and this is a guy that uh, this team wants to rely on going in the future. 1.3 war overall this season. Dylan Tate, uh, we maybe highlighted him kind of towards the end of the season, one of the last games, but Dylan Tate was exceptional. 99.1 innings, 26 earned runs, 69 strikeouts, but a 2.36 ERA and a 1.08 whip. I mean, probably the best overall bullpen guy for this team. Giovanni Gallegos is also on this team. He had a really good season, but man, did Dylan Tate pop off this year, career year, out of nowhere, and uh, you know, at 27 years old, this is a good, a good bullpen piece to build around for sure. Excellent stuff from Dylan Tate. And Nick Vincent, okay, Nick Vincent was pretty good too. A lot of innings for him as well, 82.2 innings, and, you know, finished with really good numbers there at a near 3 ERA. And here's Johnny Giovanni Gallegos, and, you know, this is a, another excellent bullpen guy here, an excellent closer on a, down a maybe not a great team. 37 saves, 55 innings, a 2.6 ERA, 16 runs allowed, and a 0 0.98 whip, 1.3 war. Yeah, Giovanni Gallegos is one of the best closers in baseball, and uh, he certainly had an excellent season this year here for the Chinooks. So the Chinooks have some stars. They got Gallegos, Devinson, Dylan Tate, Justin Topa. They have a few of these guys that, you know, really performed well and were, you know, the guys that they really leaned on for that bullpen. But, you know, the, kind of the rest of the bullpen was definitely shaky. And, uh, you know, we'll see what they can do going into next year overall. So now we go to the Dragons here. And the ace of this team is Shane Bieber. And, you know, he the ERA is maybe a little higher than what we expect from him. 3.42 ERA, 1.15 whip. He still had 214 strikeouts. So one of the few guys to get over 200 strikeouts. But kind of struggled with giving up home runs. He gave up 26 of them this year. And a 4.6 war, which is actually his highest war since 2019. So it's not a bad year or anything. But... You kind of maybe expect him to do a little bit better, but he's still a 95 overall and still only 26 years old. So, I mean, he's still going to be, you know, a superstar 80s for a really, really long time in this franchise. So here is Mike Soroka, and Mike Soroka had a really good year too. 202 innings for him, 149 strikeouts and a 3.16 ERA. Uh, you know, not maybe not as good as his 2019 with Atlanta in real life, but... Man, I mean, a lot of innings, a lot more innings than he's ever pitched, 2.8 war. So just on the face of that, he ended up having a public career year for him. So really good stuff from Mike Soroka. Kenta Maeda, 33 years old. You know, I, I, I feel like he's older than he actually is in real life always when I look at him. Uh, but, man, he got tanked even though he had a 3.07 ERA and a 1.2 whip. Like, those are super solid numbers. Uh, Abu Alazo, I really struggled with 5.7, uh, 5.07 ERA. And uh, then Alec Mills, 3.76 ERA, 191 innings, not too bad. And honestly, overall, this this starting pitching staff, besides uh, Alazo, I was really good. So, you know, I think that this team is going to, this team is going to retain all these starting pitchers going into next year. And so, man, that's a good pitching rotation to build off of going into next season. And then the bullpen, you got Craig Stammen, 113 innings at 3.97 ERA. Tyler Matzik, 70 innings, pretty good numbers, 3.69 ERA for him, 31 years old. Jose Alvarez, eh, not great. Will Harris, 57 innings and 27 runs, not great. JT Chagua was really good, though, 50.1 innings, 16 runs, a 2.86 ERA, and a 1.05 Whip, again, kind of a guy that came out of nowhere, although he was really good last year, actually, but um, good season for him. Rex Brothers struggled mightily, 4.73 ERA, not good. And then Oliver Perez was actually this team's closing pitcher, and, you know, he's 40 years old, so, you know, really good numbers, though, for, you know, what he is in his age. 33 saves, 9 blown, which is maybe a lot, but... Uh, you know, 36 strikeouts. I mean, honestly, from a 40-year-old guy, you take that. I don't know if he's going to be on this team next year. I, he's a free agent, so I don't think he's going to be the closer, though. Uh, that's that's probably out of the question, I think, for this team. So, good starting rotation, and a little slightly worse bullpen, and that's going to be a thing of a, a, te a 
an area of improvement for sure for them. So then you go to the offense, and there's Michael Brantley, who, you know, is going to be going into free agency this year, and, man, he had a really good season, man. He just gets on base. He does a great job of that, a 298 career average for him. And this season, he had a 295 average and a 360 on base percentage with 27 doubles and 20 homers, 16 stolen bases, uh, 816 OPS, yeah, just excellent numbers for the 34-year-old guy. And, you know, 3.6 war actually is highest since 2019 with Houston. So, again, as I mentioned, he is a free agent. And this team also got Joey Gallo. Remember that. So he's also going to be a free agent. You want to resign at least one of those guys, probably both of them, though. I don't think you would want to get, you know, you you really like what Michael Brownlee does for you. Brent, uh, Garrett Cooper, man, I kind of wish Garrett Cooper did this for the Marlins. But, man, 805 OPS, that's really good. This is one of the best that I've ever seen him do, actually, a 279 average, great stuff there. Corey Seager was excellent, of course. A 269 average, 803 OPS for him, 32 homers, 2.5 war, which is actually a one war decline from last season for him, which is kind of interesting to me. It's just, yeah, the average and the on base, I guess, were a lot better last year, but still, really good season for Corey Seager. And then Jose Altuve. Yeah, I mean, he's a really good hitter, man. That's all I that's all I can say. I don't, you know, I, I mean, my opinion of him personally has kind of changed uh, ever since, you know, 2018 and this finding out about the science skilling thing. But, man, he, I can't admit that he's really good at baseball. 36 doubles, 25 homers, 83 RBIs with an 839 OPS, his highest double count since 2017. Yeah, I mean, he just gets on base like crazy, and he is really good at getting Extra base knocks, 21 stolen bases. That's a lot as well. So one of the best second base shortstops out there, 4.9 war. You just can't complain about those results if you are the the Dragons. And then there's Joey Gallo. And remember this team traded for him. It's actually the second year in a row that he's uh, been traded. But got him from the Columbus Cardinals, I believe. And, uh, man, Joey Gallo, 38 homers, 23 doubles. Yeah, I mean, the average in the on-base... Not amazing, but 4.5 war, that's actually maybe a career high for him. You know, better than any of those seasons there. That is a career high in war for him, which is really impressive. But, yeah, you really can't deny 30, 38 dingers. I mean, that's what he does. Now, really low vision, but excellent power. 507 slugging and an 844 OBS. So, definitely want to keep him around going into next year. And uh, he... He just showed off the power in a lot in really good, great ways this year. And then Anthony Santander was really good, actually. A third, 27 homers, 85 RBIs. Now, I would like him to walk a bit more, get on base a bit more. 312 on base is not the greatest, but, you know, those are good numbers for Santander. I'll take that 2.4 war, which is actually career high for him as well. Um, so, yeah, man, really good stuff from a lot of this offense here. Josh Jung. Rookie year, and I mean, that's pretty good. I'll take those numbers there, 713 OPS, 24 years old, and, you know, a guy to really look for in the future. And then you got Corey Lee, and man, Corey Lee, I mean, this is impressive. I'm impressed by these numbers here. Didn't know what to expect from him starting this year with 29 doubles, 12 homers, and look at those attributes. He's got 73 contact versus lefties now. The attributes really were increasing. I mean, the walks were not great for him, only at 33, but 3.1 war, that's excellent stuff, man. Great, great rookie year from Corey Lee, for sure. And then Nick Senzel was not great. I mean, probably definitely the worst hitter here on this lineup. But yeah, I mean, the lineup for this team is really not not bad. So I think a little bit of a retooling going into this next year. And Michael Bush, yeah, he struggled in his rookie year, for sure. Only 3-1. Uh, uh, on base, but yeah, a little bit of retooling going into next season, I really believe is the only thing that uh, the Dragons need, and they're going to be competitive again going into next season, I'm pretty sure of that, especially if they can get, you know, Michael Brantley and Joey Gallo back on this roster, but yeah, really good lineup here, and we'll see what they can do in the offseason going into next year. So now we go to the Scorpions, and the Scorpions just didn't have a good season, so we'll probably get through this team pretty fast. But Wander Franco is up first leading off. And, you know, rookie year, I mean, 
did some things really good. He had 39 doubles, which is a ton, 15 stolen bases. But, you know, I mean, the average and the on-base aren't amazing or anything. 2.6 war. Yeah, I mean, in real life, he's definitely got some issues that he's got to work through. But, uh, man, you know, those are some good rookie numbers. He's going to be uh, a pretty big star in this league going forward. He's only 21. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe. Okay, those are pretty decent numbers. 26 years old. Maybe you would like him to do a bit better, but not bad. Uh, Hannah Runfro was pretty bad, though. I mean, a 290 on base, 221 average. That's just pretty terrible. And 155 strikeouts is a ton of strikeouts. And, you know, didn't have any war. Didn't have a positive or negative war. So it was just very average. I mean, not much more to say about him. And I honestly don't know what you really want to do with Hannah Runfro because he's under contract for a while, I think, and they're not really, I don't know about trading him. He's not got a lot of trade value. And then you get to Marcus Semien, and, you know, Marcus Semien still 91 RBIs, still had a pretty good season, but, you know, definitely stepped back from what he did last year. And, uh, you know, I don't know, a 2.3 war, I don't know how good he actually is. I think he might be just a little bit overrated, but, you know, I don't know if he really deserves to be 95 overall in this game. I mean, last year was really good for him, but yeah, not a great, not I mean, not an amazing season for him. Uh, you never get Hernandez, 757 OPS, 29 homers, 80 ribbies. I mean, those are pretty good numbers for him. Not like exceptional numbers, or anything, but he's a good utility player for this team. 3.7 award, which is exactly what he did last year, actually. So. Yeah, not an improvement, not a really bad downgrade either from last year to this season. And then there's Tyrone Taylor, and, you know, Tyrone Taylor wasn't awful, I guess. Uh, not great, though. 31 doubles, that's not too bad. 751 OPS. Uh, Yanni Molina definitely struggled. I mean, just a bad offensive year for him. And his last year in the majors, I'm not going to have the Scorpions or anybody else resign him. I don't think he's going to actually physically retire in the game, but he will not be signing with anyone. So these are his final numbers in his career. Pretty accurate to real life. And, you know, you want to get the comparison, you can watch the finale, the season finale episode, and we give that to you. Um, or the episode, like a few episodes ago, uh, when we were playing the last games of the season. But, yeah, I mean, you can tell this offense just didn't have a lot going for it. It's not... Got a lot of great star power. Just, like, on base is definitely a thing that this team struggled with this season. So, yeah, not amazing offensively for the Scorpions and not a great bench either. And you go to the pitching, and this pitching was, it was okay. It was a lot, lot leaves a lot to be desired. Tyler Glasnow, as this team's ace, struggled this year. He had over 200 strikeouts, but, I mean, a 1.49 whip, 188 hits allowed. Yeah, that's just a lot. It's too much there. Aaron Savali was good. I mean, 204 innings, that's definitely a career high for him. A lot more than he's ever pitched. And, you know, he was pretty impressive. I'll take those numbers from him. And, you know, at only 26, want to keep him around. Justin Dunn, oh man, he had 11 starts. And he had a 6.19 ERA and a 1.78 whip. So, you know, just too many walks. 37 of them, 56 hits. He just allowed way too many base runners. And I don't know what to do with him because, you know, he's going to be 27 next year. And I don't know if I want him. I mean, I'll probably have him be in the farm system again and in the minors again. But, man, he's kind of getting he's getting up there in age in terms of, you know, prospects. Um, Jake Odorizzi was not very good. It's just not a good pitching staff. I mean, what else is there to really say? It's just not, not it. Um, Jackson Joe didn't get any pitching time actually this season. But uh, he'll get a shot on this team next year, I think. Nick Sandlund uh, was not very good at all. Uh, Sean Newcomb had a 4.1 ERA. Garrett Richards was pretty awful. I mean, 1.74 whip, 86 hits. That's really bad. Josh Taylor was just not good. Uh, Genesis Caprera was yeah, decent. I mean, decent. I mean, compared to everybody else, he was like a superstar. Um, but really, overall, he was pretty decent. And then Taylor Rogers was his team's closer. And, you know, he blew nine saves. That's that's a lot. And, you know, overall was just decent, not anything spectacular. Just, yeah, I did the pitching, bullpen, not good. And the offense is just not very good either. So not a lot of positives there for 
the Scorpions. Now we go to the uh, the Houston Reapers here, and uh, Jose Barrios had a really good season, man. This is one of his better ones probably of his career. 206 innings for him, 151 strikeouts, a 2.8 ERA, and a 1.15 whip. So all that is really, really good and uh, was definitely a great ace. So he's going to be the guy getting the ball in this wildcard game and uh, pretty confident that he can go out there and pitch a really good game because he had a really good season. Again, the strikeouts are way down for him compared to last year, which I don't know why. I, again, I think this game just doesn't do a great job of really playing that out in simulation, but yeah, and because of that, his war only sat at 2.7. So still really good year, though, for Jose Barrios. James Paxton, 198 innings for him, 3.9 ERA and a 1.33 whip. So... Yeah, not not awful. They had a lot, actually had a good strikeout count there at 180, I believe. Uh, Ryan Yarbrough was pretty good, 187 innings, 3.64 ERA, 1.27 WHIP. That's really career year for him in a lot of respects. Innings pitched, a low ERA there, so good season for Ryan Yarbrough. And then Mike Meyer was pretty decent as well, under four ERA, 3.92, and 197 innings. So nobody in this pitching staff. Sat, uh, or actually, never mind. Well, Chris Archer wasn't a starter for the whole year. Um, but, yeah, in the long relief role, kind of bullpen, well, he wasn't that great. But, you know, all those four starters, nobody was below a four year, or everyone was below a four year race. So, really good stuff. Uh, Alino, Alino DeSantos was that number five starter. I moved him out of it because he just was not pitching very well. But you get to the bullpen, Alex Vesia, 20 innings. Six runs, pretty small sample, honestly, uh, but was really good in that sample, so I think they should have given him more innings, considering, especially considering he had 40 last year. It was really good in those 40 innings, but uh, either way, Jeffrey Springs, you know, that's relatively the same workload as he did last season, but was actually way better. 2.66 ERA and 1.05 whip. Really, really good stuff from him. Finished with, you know, just a 0.3 war, but still really, really good numbers for Jeffrey Springs. Connor Brogdon, 35 innings at 3.86 ERA. He's got deep potential, but, you know, there's Paul Sewold, and Paul Sewold pretty much, he was pretty, he struggled. He struggled for sure. Uh, Daniel Hudson, 56 innings. Wasn't too bad, although the whip is pretty high because he gave up a lot of hits, but not terrible. Then Kendall Graveman, 23 saves and, you know, four blown. He was the setup man for a while, and he moved into the closer spot because you know, he was just pitching really well. He finished with a 2.95 a ERA and a 1.15 whip. Really good numbers for him and a potential increase as well. So, you know, I, I like this bullpen. It's, you know, maybe got some holes in it, but it's not really that awful. So we'll see how they can do uh, in the bull, in this, uh, in the in the playoffs. And uh, we're going to actually move Jeffrey Springs into that setup role. I think that's the, the right play there and the good move, but yeah, pretty decent pitching staff, though. So now we get to the offense here, and this offense was pretty darn good. A bunch of Mondesi led things off, and, you know, I mean, the average, 243, not amazing. The on-base wasn't either wasn't amazing either. Um, he did steal 42 bags, though. That's really impressive. One of the best uh, base stealers in the American League. And they get Alex Bregman, who they got in a trade this season. And, you know, Alex Bregman... I think he did about what he was doing before the trade happened and, you know, finished with an 816 OPS. So better than last year for him. Although last year, you know, cut served by injuries, but better than last year, still really good. And, I mean, he's got a ton of playoff experience. 3.2 war, that's his best in score 19. So this team is definitely going to lean on his playoff experience here in this playoff run because he's got a lot of it here playing for Houston in his career. And then Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman, I mean, he's one of the best first base offensive guys in baseball. There's a reason for that. And he had another a really impressive season. 30 doubles, 35 homers, 96 RBIs, 941 OPS. I mean, through a nine average, that, that's just really amazing, man. I don't know what else to really say about that. And uh, 5.9 war, that's impressive. He's got 61 career war. This is a guy who's going to be a Hall of Famer, I think, at one point in his career, both in real life and in this game. But, man, just an impressive season and a really big, you know, just the rock 
for this lineup for sure. But yeah, it's actually his highest average that he's had since 2018 in a full season. Really impressive. And then he got Rafael Devers, and you know, Rafael Devers crushed 41 homers, a career high for him. Uh, average of 258 and on base of 337, maybe lower than you want, but you know, 526 slugging and 863 OPS. You take those numbers all day long. 26 doubles. I mean, yeah, Rafael Devers is 25 years old, super young guy, and uh, just going to be an absolute beast, both in real life and in this game. I mean, just a career, a guy that's going to have a fascinating and really awesome career, and is only going to get better, you would think. And then you get J.A. Martinez, and J.A. Martinez was really good as well. 34 years old, and 31 homers and 88 RBIs for him. First time with over 30 home runs since 2019, and a 279 average. So, you know, he definitely did go down in his ratings, but an 853 OPS is super good. 3.7 war, that's actually his highest since 2019. So, yeah, J.D. Martinez was fantastic. And, I mean, just the, just this lineup, you know, two through five, basically, is so good. Matt Duffy, really good numbers. I mean, for him, maybe not really good, but I uh, still had a pretty decent season there. Mike Yastrzemski was all right. He was decent with a, with a 703 OPS and a 247 average. And, and then Jesus Sanchez, first, you know, maybe not a rookie this year, but I was looking for him to improve in his numbers. He's 24 years old, and he did that. And, you know, it's not an amazing year, but you know, he's a guy that we got to have some patience with. And, uh, you know, 2.8 war definitely took a step in the right direction this year. So I do like to see that, and we'll see what he can do in his first ever playoff action. And uh, then James McCann wasn't great. I mean, as his team's catcher, yeah, it wasn't, all, wasn't amazing. But, yeah, seriously, like this 2 through 5 batting order here, it's probably the best 2 through 5 in all of baseball. It's just such a good lineup here with the addition of, you know, Alex Bregman into this batting order. The 2 through 5 in this batting order is just absolutely insane. So... You know, how long is that going to, how much is that going to carry them here in the playoffs? They're facing Boston, and I think it's a really interesting first-round matchup. So, they got a chance to go far in the playoffs. So, now we go to the Diablos here, and this team is going to be facing off in the wildcard game against New York. And, you know, we'll see, look at this offense. It's just slightly inconsistent. You know, Jake Cronenworth, 34 doubles, 17 homers, 240 average, like, those aren't awful numbers. 20 stolen bases is pretty decent there, uh, but not anything like special or spectacular. 3.3 war, it's worse than he had last year, and I also think last year was a lot better for him in a lot of respects. JJ Boudet definitely struggled as a rookie, and, you know, honestly, we'll probably start next year in the AAA farm system just to get him some experience down there. Uh, I think we'll see him in the major leagues at some point next year, but. Probably not to start the year. Tim Anderson was really good. 800 OPS for him. That's his fourth straight season now with an at least an 800 OPS. 27 homers, 29 doubles, 72 RBIs. So, yeah, man, you take that. Tim Anderson had a great year. Uh, he is a free agent at the end of this season. So, definitely want to keep him if you're the Diablos. And we'll see what happens with that in the offseason. But 4.3 war for him, which actually might be a career high. I mean... I think it is. So, career high in war for Tim Anderson. Really good season there. And a potential increase, which is really nice. So, now we get to these Osmani Grandol. And, you know, definitely not realistic because in real life he's pretty washed up at this point. But, oh my goodness, what a year. 14 doubles, 7 triples, which is a ton for a catcher. That's awesome. But, really, where it came down to was the home runs. 53 homers. That's the best in baseball. Nobody had more than that. 121 RBIs. That ties the Major League record. Uh, the best in baseball. Or best in AL, actually. The best in the American League with Monsoto. But a 1.027 OPS. 650 slugging. 306 average. 61 walks. So, actually, he had a, he drew some walks for sure. I mean, these are just unreal numbers. Career highs and everything. Blew everybody away with his season here and you know for a catcher i mean this is a record setting year nobody's had you know over 50 home runs ever as a catcher so we set the major league record 
in that category and uh, just had an incredible year. So, you know, he's going to be up there as an MVP candidate. And, you know, I think even how good he was once Soda was just slightly better, but a 9.6 war. That's unreal. That is the, you know, second best in the American League and just an incredible season for Yasmani Grandol. And, you know, look at those statistics. I mean, he's 33. He's going to be an absolute power masher and a really big hitter for you for a while. I mean, just what a fascinating season by Grandol. So, yeah, he's up there with an MVP conversation. And then you get to Josh Bell, who actually did improve his potential. But, you know, a 220 average is not amazing. 320 uh, on base. He did walk quite a bit, actually. 728 OPS. Uh, didn't have any war, though, because his defense wasn't that good, actually. But 31 homers. I think that's a career high for him, maybe. But, you know... You see the stats increasing. Actually, it's not, never mind, it's not. But, you know, I, I mean, an interesting season for Josh Bell. Mike Moustakis, E below 300 on base, wasn't really that great. And I think that's where this team really struggled was just the on base for a lot of these hitters is just not very great. Uh, David Bodie was pretty good. I mean, those are not terrible numbers. Take those numbers, 23 homers and 64 RBIs. With a 751 OPS, so not awful. 1.3 WAR. Okay, so yeah, not bad for David Bodie, and he plays a lot of positions for sure. And then Sal Frilick in his Indiana bounce, 21 hits, three homers, and six doubles. So you know his slugging was pretty decent, but did kind of struggle to get on base, and uh, kind of expected with you know his vision and discipline and where where it's at. So. Um, he'll probably start the season in AAA, but he's a guy that does figure into the bigger picture long term for this team. And then you got Oscar Mercado, who just was awful. I mean, 199 average is pretty terrible. So, yeah, I mean, this team just didn't get on base. They they really struggled with that. And, you know, besides just winning Grandal and Tim Anderson, um, the offense definitely had its issues. So we'll see what happens with them in this wildcard game and if they move on. And then their pitching staff here. The pitching staff is pretty good, actually. Brandon Woodruff going to be going on, going and pitching for them in the wildcard game. And, I mean, he's got ace numbers, man. 211 innings for him, 171 strikeouts, and, you know, 1.07 whip, 4.1 war. Really good numbers and a really good season from Brandon Woodruff at 29 years old and, you know, 3.27 ERA. And, again, the strikeouts are way down for him for some reason. But, man, really good season from Brandon Woodruff for sure. So, you know, next year is going to be his last year of his contract. So that might be interesting to look at, you know, maybe not this offseason, but an offseason from now. Logan Gilbert, 3.86 ERA, 1.3 war, not bad. Shane McClanahan, 3.9 war, or 3.9 ERA. I don't know why I was saying war for a minute there, but 187 innings. That's pretty good numbers. Jared Eikhoff was actually really good. 205 innings for him. That's a lot. 3.59 ERA and a 1.19 whip. So good stuff there. And even Jordan Alamoto at the very bottom of, the, of this rotation wasn't awful with a 4.8 ERA. So, you know, honestly, overall, this was a really good pitching staff. And I think that was one of their biggest reasons that they ended up making it into the postseason. Daily, uh, Bradley Fulcher wasn't that great, though, as a long reliever. Tyler Hearn really struggled as well. Jason Adam, 33 innings, 8 runs allowed, 2.14 whip. I mean, 9 walks as well, so his whip was really good at 0 0.83. That's impressive. And Emilio Pagan was really good, 2.91 ERA, 1.06 whip. Yeah, that's great numbers and a lot of innings for him. Um, not actually his career high in, in innings, but... You know, almost a one whip, uh, one war, basically. So, really good stuff from Emilio Pagan as well. And then Matt Strom was also excellent. I mean, we highlighted him at a couple of points this season, but my goodness, was he incredible. 41 innings, 6 runs allowed, 12 walks allowed, a 1.12 whip, a 1.1 war. That's pretty impressive when you only pitch, you know, 40 innings. And a 1.32 ERA. That is awesome. He just popped off and had a absolute career season this year. Great stuff from Matt Strong.
one of the best, I mean, one of the best early pitchers in the game this year. Aaron Loop, 29.1 innings, so kind of a smaller sample. Uh, yeah, just struggled a little bit. I mean, not with the walks. He didn't walk a lot of guys, but he did give up a lot of hits. So, yeah, 4.3 ERA, just kind of eh for him. And then Adam Simber was really good. 30 innings, 5 runs allowed, and a 1.5 ERA sub-1 whip, 15 holds this season. So, now this team had some, some really good relief pitching, actually. And, of course, they had a really good closer that we'll show you in a minute. But, man, I mean, 0 0.7 war for Adam Simber. Had a really good year last year, actually, and probably maybe should have gotten more innings. But then their closer is Josh Taylor, and Josh Taylor is really, really good. I mean, there's nothing. I, you haven't, you've heard that before. 68 strikeouts and 56 innings, 47 saves, which is a career high for him, actually. And, you know, 3.18 ERA and a 1.34 whip. So, yeah, Josh Taylor was excellent this year. Had his almost a one war. Not as good as last year, actually. He had 100 strikeouts last year. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, maybe the strikeouts weren't necessarily what you expect. Again, I mean, the strikeouts are probably down from what he really should have gotten. But, yeah, man, that's a really good season from Josh Hader. And, uh, honestly, overall, a really strong bullpen here in Mexico City. So now we go to the Vipers here. And, you know, Tampa Bay, they had a decent season overall. And they kind of threatened for a playoff spot for a little bit, but fell short. Tanner Hook was really good, 25 years old, so, you know, young guy, and he had a career year this season as his team's ace, technically, 3.42 ERA, really good stuff. Uh, there's Mike Clevenger, 180 innings and a 3.9 ERA, 1.42 whip, so those are really good numbers there, 209 strikeouts, that's a lot of Ks for him, and actually it might be a career high for him in a season. Now, he is going to be a free agent, so where does that leave him? If he comes back, I don't know, or he doesn't come back, he might not. Uh, Eric Fetty was also pretty good, 180 innings, 3.69 ERA. And, yeah, I mean, overall, this uh, pitching staff maybe didn't have, like, some big names to it. John Nick Lodolo, 32 innings and six starts, was pretty good. You know, I'll take that. I mean, the whip was definitely a little bit too high, 1.6. Uh, but, yeah, he's going to be a starter, and he's going to be on this team going forward. He's going to be that number five pitcher. But, yeah, overall, I mean, this pitching staff was actually not too bad. Not any huge big-name guys on it, but they did their job well. And then there's Edgar Santana, a deep potential relief pitcher who actually did really good this year in 89 innings. 2.72 ERA and a 1.21 whip. Those are very, very solid numbers, so I'll probably have to go in there and update his stats a little bit. Or his attributes, Ryan Harper, and he had 145 innings, and he had a 2.85 ERA and a 1.07 whip. So really good numbers from Ryan Harper this year. Finished with a 1.9 war. So, man, that's really good stuff. And I never really highlighted or showcased him at all this season, and he just had a really good year. Yeah, I mean, 34 walks, 122 hits. Great stuff there. Zach Thompson, 167 innings, and it was pretty bad. Jake Diekman, 32 innings, so maybe run it on and get him more. He was not terrible, though. Jake McGee was pretty darn good in 65 innings. 2.74 ERA and a 1.05 whip, and I don't know if this team has him going into next year, but that's a guy that they could trade. Diego Castillo, 41 innings, 15 runs allowed, and, you know, 3.29 ERA. Okay, not too bad. I'll take that from him. Pretty good season there. Maybe not as good as last year for him, but still pretty good. And then Andrew Kittredge what, is one of the best closers uh, in baseball here. Last year was absolutely incredible for him. And then this year was just fantastic. I mean, 44 saves, 6 blown, but 60 innings, and a 1.02 ERA, or 1.2 whip, 1.2 war, and a 2.23 ERA. I mean, that's just excellent stuff there from Andrew Kittredge, one of the really up-and-coming and rising relief pitchers in baseball here, and definitely will be this team's closer going forward. Had a fantastic season this year. He's only an 83 overall, so kind of a low ratings for a guy that did that good. So now we go to the lineups here, and here's Ramon Tapia who, you know, has probably better ratings than I would have expected in this game. And uh, overall this year for him, 
it was all right. I mean, 318 at, on base, 705 OPS. Not terrible. Better, better than ex expected, but still not amazing. O'Neill Cruz, rookie year for him. And, you know, 31 doubles, 16 homers. Yeah, I mean, those are good numbers. I'll take that from him. Look to have him improve going into next season. He's only 23 years old, so you know, hopefully he will. He's got very even stats across the board. And then DJ LeMayhew was kind of bad. He, he struggled. I mean, just didn't get on base a lot. And, and unfortunately, this team has a four years, four years left in his contract, so that might bite them in the butt. And there's Brian Buxton. Brian Buxton had a full year. He didn't get injured at all this season. And, you know, he had 39 doubles this season. Those are his stats, and he's got really good hitting numbers. 39 doubles, 5.7 war. That's fantastic. And, man, I wish that he could stay healthy and put up these kind of numbers in real life. I love Byron Buxton as a Twins fan. But, man, he's just been kind of disappointing in his major league career. But this season for him was excellent. 854 OPS. Now, the one thing that he still really struggles with is getting walks. He only had 29 walks this year, which is definitely not where we want it to be, but still really good year from Brian Buxton. And then JT Willamuto, one of the best offensive catchers in baseball. Everybody knows this, and he had a great season. 34 doubles, 22 homers, 73 RBIs, a 4.8 war, which is actually the same that he had, the exact same he had last year. So, you know, he's a 90 overall. I mean, he's just absolutely outstanding offensively, and his defense is really solid as well. So, 22 homers, 73 ribbies. Yeah, just a great year from JT. And then Spencer Torkelson, speaking of great years, Spencer Torkelson is probably in the front running for a for the uh, Rookie of the Year in the American League. I mean, 28 homers for him, 2.7 war, really good there. But, man, I mean, those these counting stats are awesome. 804 OPS, 343 on base, 461 slugging, 276 average, 28 dingers, 88 RBIs, and 18 doubles, 10 stolen bases. So, yeah, Spencer Sogelson was fantastic this year. His defense was really good. And, you know, he's so young, and he's going to be a superstar in this league for sure. Now, Kevin Pillar, man, he had, he had power for sure. He had 26 homers and 23 doubles is uh, actually really good for him. Luis Grome really struggled. I mean, we called him up. He had 71 at-bats, and he just didn't do anything in those 70 at-bats. So that's uh, that team's offense there. Now, I don't know if I actually... Uh, I should. I did show their pitching. Never mind. Now we go to the Jazz, and, you know, obviously El Garcia, 16 homers, 33 doubles for him. Um, actually, really good at numbers. I'll take that 3.3 war, so... Good stuff from Movia Sogar C here at 30 years old and, you know, 825 OPS. So this team definitely didn't meet their expectations, but they're still really young. So I, it'll be interesting to see if they can improve next year, and Garcia will be a part of that for sure. And then Ender Isiarte, yeah, not amazing. I mean, below 700 OPS. Salvador Perez, I mean, he cranked out 37 home runs and 102 RBIs, but... You know, the on base sitting at 274 is just really low. 31 walks. I mean, he's never been a guy that got some, that gets a lot of walks. He did limit his strikeouts by quite a bit, though, this year. But, yeah, I mean, this is a step back from last season for sure for him. I um, mean, but still, I don't really know how much you can complain about a guy, about a catcher that gets you 37 homers and over 100 RBIs, though. I mean, that's still really, really good. And he's, you know, he knows what he's really good at, and that's, crushing the ball, and he does that very well. Now, all right, Mock Castle, yeah, this is really disappointing. I mean, 27 doubles and 28 home runs, but 205 average and 270 on base. Those two numbers are just way too low, so not great from him. Jared Kelnick was pretty good, okay, 22 years of, old, of age, so he's going to get a lot better here, you think, and he's got 26 home runs and 26 doubles this year. I mean, 1.4 war, not amazing, but... Honestly, not very, not bad at all. I, I will take those numbers from Jared Kelnick in the outfield. And then Jazz Chisholm, you know, he improved. He improved from last season in every in every respect. 27 doubles, 6 triples, 17 homers, 16 RBIs. But, you know, what I really look at is that average. And, you know, the war at 3.6 is way better. The defense was way better for him. But... Yeah, I mean, he just, you know, improving his numbers all around. He's a well-rounded hitter now, it looks like. 
Um, does want I do want him to walk more, but a 289 average is really good for him. So I just hope he continues to improve because he's got a chance to be a really good, you know, just superstar in this league if he does. Yohan Moncada kind of sucked. I mean, 207 average, that's just bad. Uh, Marcelo Mayer, yikes. Yeah, only had 4 or 15 hits, 85 at-bats. Yeah, maybe he's not ready for the show yet. Maybe he needs another year in the minors. That's kind of what I'm getting from that. I mean, I didn't expect him to do great or anything. I didn't expect him to, like, pop off. But, yeah, this is pretty disappointing and uh, kind of shows he just might not be ready for the show yet, and that's okay. He's only 19. So, yeah, that one RBI that, you know, I got with him in his rookie debut was... One of only four, five total. He got him. He got four more after that. Bubba Thompson, okay, 281 average for Bubba Thompson. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, you know, not a guy that I haven't really highlighted or talked about, but he's a young guy that's got maybe some promise there. He had a good season in his limited action. But, yeah, so, you know, you look at the, you look at this team and you look at their farm system, you got not a whole lot. I mean, you know, you're really looking for Marcelo Meyer to take big steps going into next year. And so we'll see if he can do that. Uh, but Freddie Peralta, the pitching here, Peralta did. I, I thought he got hurt. Maybe he didn't. But 31 games started, 178 innings pitched. Maybe he missed just like one start or something. But, you know, 283 ERA and 1.2 whip. Can't deny that. Those are really good numbers for him. He's only 25. So, yeah, Freddy Peralta is definitely a good ace here. And only 138 hits allowed is excellent. 3.5 war, so just slightly below last year. But, yeah, man, still a great season. And, you know, did have only 10 less strikeouts than he did last year, but in a lot more innings. So, again, strikeouts maybe not where you would expect them to be, but still a great season for Freddy Peralta. And then uh, John Means, uh, this team traded for him. In the Terry deadline, or no, they've had him the whole season, never mind. But, man, John Means is such a glitch in this game, I feel like. And he had an excellent season. 3.7 war, that's actually a career high for him this year. But a 3.24 ERA and a 1.07 whip, I mean, those are great, great numbers. And uh, he just had a fantastic season. 20 years old, this is a really big, a really underrated pitcher to look out for in the future. You know, and I feel like he does just really well no matter what franchise I'm doing. And uh, he's just a guy that every time I see somebody play franchise, he does really well. So he's just a great pitcher for franchise, I guess. Tony Gonsolin, 173 innings, sub four whip for him. So not too bad numbers there. You know, you'd take that. Uh, David Pearson was not great, though. Uh, neither was Shane Baz. I mean, 6.65 ERA. Ooh, that's just pretty disgusting. And he didn't even improve very. He didn't even improve at all. He didn't improve in his overall. So, yikes! A 1.8 WHIP. That's absolutely dreadful. 195 hits allowed is just way too bad. I, I mean, 116 runs. That's that's bad. So yeah, Shane Baz probably does not start in this rotation next year with that kind of a season. But those top three guys, really good. Then you go to the bullpen, and uh, Steve Cichek, not good. He's never done good in franchise for me. Uh, Matt Whistler, okay, you know, pretty good. 3.73 ERA, 1.14 whip, not too bad. Uh, and Joe Smith was pretty good, actually. 62.2 innings, 22 runs, given up. He's 38 years old, and he's only a 62 overall. So don't know if he's going to be pitching next year for this team, but we'll have to see. Tim Hill was really good. 60 innings for him and improved from last year in a lot of those categories. Had the same amount of walks, but 18 runs allowed, 34 strikeouts, which is kind of low, I think, compared to last season for him. But good numbers there. Garrett Crochet was excellent. 35 innings for him this year. I don't know why. They need to give him more innings, man. 2.57 ERA. Only 22 strikeouts, but you know he's only 22 years old, so he's a super young guy. Then Ryan Presley, as his team's closer, 41 saves, 6 blown. 3.6 ERA is a little bit high, maybe you think, but, you know, 1.31 whip is, and it's not amazing. It's definitely not what he did last year, but not awful either for Ryan Presley. And uh, overall, not an awful bullpen, but could be, you know, you, you could definitely improve it for sure. Definitely could improve this whole pitching staff. So now we go to the... Oklahoma City Bison here, 
And we start off with Pablo Lopez, the ace of this team, and you know what? Those are good numbers. I'll take that. I mean, 186 innings, 3.33 ERA, and a 1.24 whip. That's good numbers for him. Sonny Gray was pretty good. He did have a really bad final start to his season. But, you know, 189 innings, a 3.8 ERA, pretty good. Dumas Moosen declined in potential and was awful. Uh, Kyle Moeller gave up 26 runs in 26 innings. Yikes. Max Freed was actually really good. I don't know why he's all the way down there in, like, the number five spot because he's really this team's, like, second best pitcher overall. But, yeah, really good stuff from him. So, yeah, I think the starting pitching leads a little bit to be desired if you're this team. Andrew Heaney was... You know, kind of there in that starting rotation. He 20, started 27 games. He was just not good. Chris Stratton, though, 207 innings as a long reliever, was excellent. 2.76 ERA, 33 runs allowed, 82 strikeouts. So definitely good stuff there from Chris Stratton and a really, I mean, a career year for him for sure in this long relief role. Richard Rodriguez, 50 innings, 5.4 ERA, not great. That guy didn't pitch at all. Uh, Rafael Montero, 50 innings, gave up 25 runs, 4.47 ERA. The whip was not terrible, I guess, but the ERA was pretty high. Jonathan Loraizaga gave up, you know, 30 runs. Uh, Phil Bickford was pretty good, 19 holds, 88 innings, 3.67 ERA, 1.15 whip. Yeah, definitely one of the better bullpen pieces for the Bison here in this season, and you know, way more innings than last year, but maybe not as effective. And then Horizon uh, Iglesias was his team's closer. He blew eight saves, 30. He had 40 in total. I mean, he is a really good closer for sure, and he had a good year, although the strikeouts, again, were pretty low for him. You know, the, I mean, it's 70 innings last year and had over 100 of them. So, you know, not as good as last year for sure, um, but still pretty good season for Horizon uh, Iglesias with a 1.04 whip and a 3.11 ERA. So, yeah, I think overall this bullpen really isn't that great, though. Definitely a lot of holes and a lot to be desired from this bullpen. You only got really a few guys that did that good. So now we go to the lineups here, and here's Whit Merrifield. And, man, we've talked about his season for sure this year. And, I mean, the one stat that I really am just incredibly impressed with is 60 stolen bases. He was caught stealing twice all year. That is unreal. 42 doubles is also unreal. So, you know, a 395 slugging. I mean, you know, a 267 average, 321 on base is not like unbelievable or anything. But man, what Mitt Merrifield did good at, he did unbelievable in the ad. Tumble the doubles, the stolen bases. Uh, those two things were just fantastic for him this year. And, you know, he had a one war basically this season. But, man, those are some really impressive numbers. And 60 stolen bases leads the league by far. Then Hernan Perez actually had a really good season getting on base. 293 average, 345 on base percentage, 2.5 war. I mean, for a 76 overall seed potential player, these are really good numbers for him. Then you get Manny Machado, and no surprise that Manny Machado was excellent this year. One off from 100 RBIs, which is kind of sad. But 33 homers, I don't know why I said sad like that. Uh, but a 290 average, 361 on base, and, you know, 5.9 war. You really can't deny those numbers. Manny Machado is one of the best hitters in baseball. Uh, no doubt about that. An 882 OPS. So, yeah, really actually better than last year in a lot of those areas, including an you know, average on base, slugging, OPS. Just everything was better from last year to this season. And this team has him for quite a while. So, and he's kind of that main anchor point that, this team wants to build around going forward, and uh, this year for him was exceptional. And then there's Brandon Lau, and Brandon Lau was really good as well. I mean, 29 homers, 87 RBIs, 250 average, 787 OPS. Now, that's good stuff. You'll take that from him. And, you know, 3.0 war. Yeah, definitely has got a lot of power in his resume, and he showed that off this season. He actually, a career high with 10 stolen bases, which is interesting. And then you get to Jack Peterson, and Jack Peterson, a 761 OPS, 22 homers and 71 RBIs. I mean, overall, really decent numbers right there for Jack Peterson this season, including in the power department, 1.1 war. Not too bad, not too bad. I think he'll take a 
bigger, more starter role going forward for this team. And then you get Sean Murphy, and Sean Murphy, as far as catchers go, these are really good numbers, and you'll take it, and it was better than last year for him. So he improved in every category, and you know he had a really good year there. Man, Andrew Vaughn didn't have a very good year, only had 14 homers and 42 RBIs, and you know a 220 average, so struggled a lot there. Nova Marte also unfortunately struggled a little bit. I, I think... I'll have him continue to play next year as a starter, but 30 doubles, 239 average, just not very impressive there, and a 290 on base percentage. But Robert Prasson, 104 at-bats, so a pretty good sample. 27 hits, had two homers and 15 RBIs. You know, those are not like awful numbers by really any means for him, but um, I do think that he's going to start the next season in AAA again just to improve those numbers again and just kind of get him some more opportunities to get a, get better. But, yeah, that's his team's offense overall, and it's really not that terrible, I don't think. Uh, Lorenzo Cain was, you know, started for a long time most of the season, 10 homers and 60 RBIs for him, 32 doubles. And, yeah, he did some things well, but was just all right and pretty average. He is a free agent, so... Don't know if this team will keep him or not, but that's the bench, and that's the offense here in um, in Buffalo, in Oklahoma City. So that is the last team that we have to highlight for you here, and now we're going to go into the league leaders. And we've already seen, you know, so we've already seen all these guys, of course, but yeah, Juan Soto led the league in average. You got Jesse Winker, Freddie Freeman, Miles Straw, Esmond Gondal, Bryce Harper, Michael Brantley, Hernan Perez, Xander Bogarts, and then in the other league, Paul Goldschmidt, Led the American League in average, and Mike Trout was also up there. So two star players uh, at the very top: Brian Reynolds, Trey Turner, John Carlos Stanton being number six is crazy to me. Fernando Tatis is also up there. Uh, Alex Verdugo, number ten, that's pretty impressive. Nick Madrigal at twelve hits, 197 for Paul Goldschmidt is the most in baseball. Falcon Turner had the most at bats in baseball with 677. Yeah, 50 doubles for Miles Straw. Uh, nobody else got to 50 doubles in the American League. And uh, six guys got to over 40 in the American League. Two Chinook players actually did that. And then you get to see these other double leaders. Yeah, 41. So only one guy got over 40 doubles in the National League, and that was Brian Reynolds. Tommy Edmond also up there a lot, uh, pretty high. But 50 doubles is just kind of insane. 11 triples for Ravisio Garcia. That's the most in the American League. Malastra had 9. Paul Fallhard, 8, which is, you know, one of the only stats that he's going to be way up there in baseball in. And then Luis Robert got 10, and so did Nick Magical in the National League. So two guys with double digits in this league, Brandon, or in the league here in the National League. And Dansby Swanson had 9 of them. And then we go to home runs, and actually the home run leader in the National League was Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with 44. Mitch Hanniger and Paul Goldschmidt had 43. And they were, you know, two in, tied for second. Mike Trout with 41, Matt Olson with 40. So five guys, 40-plus homers this year in the National League. And then you get to see the other guys, Giancarlo up there, Mark Canna at 30. But, yeah, kind of 44 might be surprisingly low. I mean, it's still a ton, but... I mean, compared to the American League, he had two guys with over 50 homers and uh, four guys with at least 40 home runs this season. Joey Gallo up there, Larson and Riley as well. And you know, a lot of guys with at least 30 this season. And then you go to the RBIs, and both Yasmani and Juan Soto finished at the top of the American League with 121. Sandra Bogarts at number three. Judge and Riley at four and five. Salvador Perez, at over 100. He's one of six guys in the American League to get to over 100. But the league leader in RBIs was Paul Goldschmidt with 128. And then Mike Trout was right behind him with 113. Hanniger had 112. We all know how Alvarez had 110. And so did Vladdy and Cedric Mullins, 102. So six guys with over 100 RBIs in the National League as well. 108 runs. For John Carlos Stan, 126 for Juan Soto is ridiculous. 60 stolen bases. Whit Merrifield blows everybody else out of the water. Nobody even comes close. Cedric Mullins, 36 
is tops in the National League there. I still can't get over 60 stolen bases, man. Uh, 86 walks leads the American League. 94 for Mitch Garver. That's a ton. Oh, man. 402 on base for Brian Reynolds. 400 on base for Mike Trout. So two guys over 400 on base percentage. And only two guys for the American League as well. But one Soto with that 425 on base is ridiculous. Jesse Winker had a 400 on base. Pretty impressive there. Freddie Freeman at four. Shohei Otani, number seven. And uh, that's the look at that top ten. Slugging percentage, Soto, 673, 650 for Randall. So three guys with over 600 slugging. And only one guy with an over 600 slugging in the National League, Mike Trout, with 634. But a lot of guys there as well at the top. And only one player, and, you know, Mike Trout, he does beat Paul Goldschmidt in, you know, average OPS, or not average, but OPS, slugging, on base, you know, all these other categories, you know, has basically the same amount of home runs, just two less and very similar RBI numbers. So, I mean, who do you have the MVP to? It's going to be between those two guys, and I don't really know. I think both of them definitely could deserve it. And then in the American League, the save leader, David Bednar, the save leader in baseball is David Bednar. Josh Hader, 47. Kirby Yates as well, 47 up there. And uh, Edwin Diaz leads the American League with 52 of them. Trevor May as well with 51. Get Woodlock almost had 50. He, he and Rogers, actually a lot of guys had 49 in the National League there. But yeah, the National League leader in RB and uh, ERA is Corbin Burns, who is going to win the... Uh, I mean, Corbin Burns is going to win the Cy Young in the listed league, and they're not going to actually put him in there, maybe, but uh, we'll just have to see. I mean, I know what they do with this voting, but Miles Michael is finishing at number three in ERA is crazy. Kyle Hendricks at four, DeGrom at five, Uena at six. That's really impressive for him to be there in the top ten. Dane Dunning is also in the top ten. Wayne Miley sitting there at number ten. And uh, then you get to go more down the list. But yeah, 2.4 for Zach Wither. That's the best in base in, uh, America, in the American League. Kai Gibson at number two. Rodon at number three. Otani there at number four. Freddie Peralta in the top five. Alex Cobb at number six is crazy to me. Luke Weaver there at number 10. Cal Cottrell, uh, Mike Soroka, a lot of those guys up there. Um, you know, least home runs allowed there. Four shutouts. Uh, four shoutouts for Zach Wheeler and Kyle Gibson this season. 231 strikeouts for Shohei. That is the American League leader. Four guys or five guys with over 200 strikeouts in the American League. Uh, McClanahan at 186 is pretty high up there. But, I mean, Jacob DeGrom led, the, led all of baseball with 234 strikeouts this season. Garrett Cole at 231. Only four guys with over 200 strikeouts in the National League, Aaron Nola had basically 200. And Matthew Boyd, okay, I didn't, I don't know, I really highlighted how many strikeouts he had this season. That's kind of, that's crazy, actually, almost 200 for him. Innings pitched, 221 for Zach Wither to lead that category. And he had quite a lot of guys with over 200 innings pitched this year. And then in the National League, 230 for all the baseball. Kevin Corbin Burns led the entire league there with 230 innings pitched. DeGrom, you know, got Cole up there. Marco Gonzalez pitched a lot of innings, too, with 213. Uh, 38 walks allowed for Josh Fleming. Okay, John Means only allowed 33 walks. That's the best in baseball. Zach Wither with a 1.01 whip, so nobody had an over one whip this season, or under one whip this season in the American League. In the National League, though, Tiki DeGrom did finish with a sub-one whip at 0.96. Jose Arquini at number two is really impressive there. Miles Michael is sitting at number five. Clint Kershaw is up there. Six war for DeGrom. That's the best in the National League. I mean, that's six war. That's really impressive for Jacob DeGrom. But it is Jacob DeGrom, so maybe it's not all that impressive, I guess. At least for him. But 5.5 five war, that's leading the American League. So actually DeGrom had that higher war than Shohei did this season. 10 batting war for Juan Soto. That's the that's about as good as you, good as you can get it right there. 9.6 for Yasmani Grandal. Uh, Miles Straw at 6.5 being number three is wild. And Mike Trout led the American League in war and actually led the National League in war 
and had a, a two war higher than Paul Goldschmidt did. So again, I mean, same average, very similar in terms of RBIs and home runs, but Mike Trout hasn't beat out in every other category, basically. So who do you give that award to? That's the question. Now look at team rankings, and actually first in all of baseball in batting average is the Raptors. So, And then the third is the Nashville Stars, so they're the best offense in the American League, and that's pretty obvious there. Second being the Toronto Firebirds is really cool and interesting, actually. But you got 10th for the Barons there, 14th for the Bees, and you go down the list, only 20th and 21st for the Arrows and the Diablos, both playoff teams, 242 for New York, and a dead last is, yep, I mean, you expected it, the Expos with a 238 batting average, even worse than the 91 loss Winnipeg Wizards. And uh, first in a bats was the Crusaders. First in runs, the Raptors. So the Raptors and Nashville were just up there in every, they're going to be up there in every offensive stat. The Monarchs at number three, way up there as well. Crusaders in that top five. Uh, runs were pretty good for the Arrows, at least. And, you know, a lot of more runs for the, uh, uh, for, oh man, I just totally, I saw their name and I blinked, uh, for the Wizards, actually. And tied for last in that runs category was the Rhinos, actually. Hits, see these top 10 leaders, and, you know, the you see the Rattlers are kind of like right in the middle of, Pretty much everything here, but 20th and 21st for the Arrows and the Diablos here. 23rd for New York. So those three, teams, those three teams are pretty even. And uh, yeah, last is the Expos. They're just last in every offensive category, pretty much. 308 doubles for the Firebirds, led the league in that category. And uh, man, the offense for this Bison team was really good. And 30th is the... Uh, was the Diablos there, actually. 46 triples for the San Francisco Spiders. Okay, they're the only... That's the only uh, category that they're going to lead in, pretty much. First in home runs was Nashville, so the Diablos, they hit a lot of bombs, and that's what they really good at this year. There was second. Third was the Sluggers, the fourth. Fourth was the Reapers. The Crusaders were way up there at with, you know, in the fifth category, and the... Excuse me, excuse me, the... Arrows actually hit a lot of home runs, too. They were a very good home run hitting team. So, of course, was the Raptors, and so were the New, and so was New York. No, number nine in that category. Uh, but we keep going down this list here, and you get to see some of these other teams. The Bees at 21st, not very good. The Barons didn't hit a lot of home runs, and neither did the Firebirds, actually. A lot, you know, really high up there in a lot of offensive categories, not this one. 30th was the... Um, was the Blue Sox. RBIs, first was the Raptors, second, Nashville, the Monarchs up there as well. And, I mean, 700 runs almost are RBIs for the Bison. Man, the Bison offense, really good. Tied for eighth there, the Barons and the Firebirds. The Arrows were up there and in the number 10 spot. 16th and 17th for New York and Mexico City. And way down here, and actually not last, uh, but last is the Chicago Blue Sox again, and their offense just wasn't very good this year, I guess. So on bases, the most was actually the Vandals, or no, the Vipers, I mean, uh, despite you know one guy having 60 for the, uh, for the Bison. You look at the base on balls, and uh, man, uh, the Bees did not walk a lot, I guess. They were last in that category. The most... Uh, the, the most walks was the Boston Barons, right? Is that That's how that goes. I don't, I, I, it kind of looks like it might have been the most of the worst. I don't know. But the most strikeouts by anybody this year was the, actually, the, the Reapers, okay? Kind of interesting there. So, yeah, it's the most walks. It looks like the top team was the most walks. So, yeah, I got that right. But um, slugging percentage, Nashville was first. Third is the... The Reapers there, and we uh, kind of keep scrolling down here, and yeah, the I mean the uh, the Blue Sox and the Expos are way down there for sure. On base, 344 for 
The Raptors, Nashville was second. The Baron, I mean, Boston, that's what they were good at, man. They were third in a baseball in on base percentage, and that was their really their biggest key to their offense. Overall, 17th for the Arrows, and you know the, the Cardinals are kind of down here in the mid, in, mid, in the high teens, basically. 302 average or on base for both the Wizards and the Expos. Only 303 for the Jazz. And Nashville was they had the first total bases. Raptors most play appearances. Chinooks got into a lot of double plays, it looked like. And uh, errors, 53, or actually that's the least amount of errors. The Millers were tied for 29th. They were the last there in terms of errors. And ERA, so this is the only reason that the Expos had a shot at the playoffs was their ERA and because they were first. First in team ERA this year. Not really surprising when you consider their top two pitchers had a 2.4 and 2.46 ERAs respectively and their strength of their bullpen. But the Las Vegas Gamblers there at second, that's pretty awesome and pretty surprising, although Kerman Burns definitely had a big part to play in that. And third for the Honey Badgers, so, yep, they had a really good pitching staff. That's what saved them. Fourth for Kansas City. Fifth is the Bees, and that's really why they're in there. Seventh of the Raptors is pretty good, okay? That's better than you would maybe expect. Um, top 10 for the Diablos as well. 16th for the Reapers. And, you know, Nashville, if you have one issue with Nashville, it's going to be their pitching, and they're pretty much middle of the road in that department. And the Barons pitching staff is not very good either. It looks like they're 25th and 30th, dead last by quite a bit, actually, is the Scorpions and Mana 4.53 team ERA is pretty awful. 12 complete games for the Expos, 19 shutouts for the uh, Honey Badgers is really good. 68 saves, that's first. And for the Barons there, blown saves, tied for 13. Okay, so the least amount went to the Expos and the 30th most for the Cardinals, actually. Uh, least hits allowed, the Honey Badgers. Okay, that's really, that's kind of surprising. And actually, you see the Rhinos up here, kind of interesting. But, I mean, I'm telling you, the, the I know a scary team is going to be the Monarchs. They are really, really good on offense. They're up there in the offensive categories. And they have been consistently top five in a lot of these pitching categories as well. So watch out for them for sure. Fourth in the pitch and the and runs allowed. Least amount of home runs allowed was the Vipers. The most was actually the Reapers. Okay, that's the thing to keep in mind in the playoffs. You certainly don't want to be giving up homers in the postseason. Nashville's allowed the least amount of walks. Okay, Nashville didn't, didn't walk a lot of guys. That was one thing that their pitching staff was really good at this year, it looked like. Uh, but, you know, the, the Arrows pitching staff is kind of down here a little bit too, but... Yeah, the Scorpions pitching staff just first there is just really bad. Least amount of or the most amount of strikeouts was actually Chicago because they got Matthew Boyd and Garrett Cole who both had, you know, Garrett Cole had 231 and Matthew Boyd had basically 200 strikeouts. Second was the Crusaders, definitely helped along by Jacob DeGrom. Third, the Firebirds there. And uh, look, the Cardinals in the top 10, 13th, four of the Expos there. And, you know, the, I mean, the Vancouver, Vandals didn't really seem to be good at really anything. Like, they were just pretty average at everything. It looked like the least amount of strikeouts went to the Nashville Stars. Highest win percentage, Nashville. Lowest win percentage as the Rhinos, of course. Batting average. Okay, so now we're back to the end of that. And now we're going to get into awards. So some of these awards might actually not be like the same. I have a spreadsheet where I put down all the awards and everything, so I kind of know what the awards look like. But Juan Soto, yes, Juan Soto does, in fact, deserve to win the MVP award in the AL with his ridiculous season. There's Monty Grandal and Bryce Harper up there as number two and number three. So, man, Bryce Harper had such a good year on a really struggling team, and the game gave this award to Paul Goldschmidt, but I actually put in my spreadsheet. Uh, I put Mike Trout on my spreadsheet. I just think that, you know, Mike Trout overall, like, he has had a very similar average. And all of the other stats besides the home runs and RBIs, Mike Trout was better in. So I think overall, Mike Trout does deserve that award. 
just a little bit over Paul Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt had an unbelievable year, but um, I do believe that that, over, that that award should go to Goldschmidt. Shell Otani, they did get him for the uh, the reliever, uh, the Cy Young. Zach Willard deserves it more, and so I put him down on my spreadsheet. I mean, not that Shell Otani had a bad year. He definitely didn't, but... I mean, a 2.4 ERA for Zach Wheeler was just incredible, and he led the league in innings pitched. And gave it to Aaron Nola here, but Corbin Burns definitely deserved to win the Cy Young Award, and I put him down in the spreadsheet. And I think, I don't even know, I don't know how he wasn't in the running for this award. Like, how was he not there at all? I mean, Aaron Nola, really the only reason he won this award was the win-loss. So he's got 16 wins this season. And I hate that. I hate that, you know, this game in their voting process favors the win loss record so much because it really that like winning with the win loss stat for pitchers is the worst stat that you can use to tell how good a pitcher is it, it just is such a bad stat to use and i i don't know why this game really likes to use that stat the most out of anything it feels like and the strikeouts as well but yeah kerber definitely deserved to win that batting title mike trout and um Mike Trout and Juan Soto, Edwin Diaz and David Bendar, Reavers of the Year, and yeah, Julio Rodriguez, and uh, Ali Rushman was up here, but you know he just didn't have a very good year. So yeah, this award definitely went to Julio Rodriguez. Pretty much, pretty easy decision there. And then Spencer Torkelson, the Rookie of the Year in the American League, and I definitely agree with that. Only Cruz is really good, but Spencer Torkelson was way better. And uh, then the Hank Aaron Award, Mike Trout and Juan Soto. I mean, Mike Trout just wins this Hank Aaron Award like every single year. And he's going to be winning it every single year in this franchise, basically. Uh, but here's a look at the gold gloves. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. You can pause it if you really want to look at that. Um, but, you know, Sanjay Espino winning one in the outfield is kind of cool, actually. Connor Joe winning one in the outfield is interesting for uh in the in the outfield but that is gonna be now we go to the silver sluggers for each of these positions mitch garver for catcher in the national league as mine could of course Freddie freeman for first base in the al that, that that makes sense checks out paul goldschmidt of course uh for first base in the national league vining was definitely up there uh, ozzy albi is for second base in the national league yep that makes sense chris taylor just really wasn't in that same level yeah, Jose Altuve winning it there. It makes sense. That that checks out. And Mugasimi and Brandon Lau are also up there. Austin Riley actually wins it for third base. I I think this one is a little bit more debatable. I think you could definitely easily give this award to Manny Machado. But they give it to Austin Riley instead. J.D. Davis wins this Silver Slugger for third base. So another Stars player getting an award there. Silver Slugger for shortstop, Fernando Tatis. Trey, Cern Trey Turner was... Went on his heels. Maybe would have won it if he didn't get hurt. Silver Slugger in the American League, Bo Bichette. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. I mean, Xander Bogarts did have an incredible year. I think if Xander Bogarts had more home runs to his name, he would have won that award pretty easily. And then Corey Seager uh, also up there. But I don't know. You can make the case for either one of those guys. Of course, Juan Soto, Silver Slugger in the outfield. Of course, Mike Trout, Sergio Mullins. Also definitely there, Jordan Alvarez, okay. And Bryce Harper, yep, makes sense. Joey Gallo up there as well. And Aaron Judge, okay, makes sense. And then Mitch Hanniger, makes sense. So those are the uh, major awards. And, you know, postseason and World Series MVP, we just have to wait and see how those awards play out. But that is all the awards, and that is all the stats for year one here in this franchise uh, I know that these videos are a lot longer, and you know a lot of people just don't really watch these ones or watch these all the way through. And uh, honestly, I don't mind that. I just do this mainly because so you guys can see what these stats, what these player stats look like. But uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm done editing, recording these ones, and we get to the playoffs now. So the next time I see you guys, so it'll be the postseason, and it'll be Kansas City and Atlanta, and Mexico City and Houston. Those are the two games that I'll have for you in the next episode. I'm excited. I'm so excited to start the playoffs and we get that going here in a bit. So 
Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more from me and if you want to get notified of when I'm uploading playoff content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody, and God bless.